Hello friends. This is Fanfic Universe Plus. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto united with the seven deadly sins? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. Man. Where the heck is she? I know those rumors were talking about a rusted armor knight around here somewhere. A 16-year-old spiky-haired blonde with whisker-like marks on his cheeks muttered to himself as he wandered through the forest with an uneasy feeling in the pit of his stomach. The teenager was wearing a long-sleeved orange jacket with a black cross designs on each shoulder, over a black t-shirt and gray pants that were connected to a unique pair of boots with heavy plating over them, and a necklace that had a green crystal gem hanging from it. Strapped onto the right side of his orange leather belt was a pouch that had a red spiral pattern on it and his right hand was completely covered in wrapped bandages. I mean seriously, I know I told her that I'd catch up to her, but if she keeps moving around then how am I supposed to find her? Coming to a halt as the ground beneath him began to rumble, the blonde narrowed his eyes as he felt a quick spike of magical power in the distance. What the hell? Mommy. Mommy. Blinking a few times at the new voice the teen turned his blue-eyed gaze in time to see a pig running in his direction. Get out of the way. Holy crap. That pig just spoke. The teen called out in shock, not moving from his spot when caused the talking pig to crash into his legs before falling back to the ground. What the heck are you? Isn't it obvious? I'm a pig, ya yeah, genius. The pig retorted angrily as it quickly got back to its feet. I don't have time to deal with you, I need to find my mama before things get bad. Noticing the blood coming out of the pig's back, the blonde quickly reached out and grabbed the pig by its ear to prevent it from running. H hey! It's not a good idea to be running around with an injury like that. That's why I'm running. There's a scary night guy that's attacking my friend and that girl. The pig shouted back as it tried to start running again, only for Naruto to hold a tight grip on the pig. Hey, let go of me, buddy. Or else you'll face the fearsome power of Sir Hawk, captain of Scrap's disposal. Sorry, Sir Hawk. But what did you say about a girl? The blonde apologized as he turned his gaze towards the path the pig had come from. Tell me, did she have long silver hair and an earring on her left ear? Aha. Uh -huh. Wait. How do you know that? Are you after Elizabeth too? Hawk questioned as he glared up at the teen, who went silent as he let go of the pig's ear and stood up straight. Before the pig could say anything however, Hawk felt something press against the area he had been stabbed by the tree bark and looked back to see a bandage was now resting on top of the wound. Hey! How'd you do that so quickly? Turning his head back to look at the blonde, the pig's sentence fell on deaf ears when he saw that there was no one else in the area with him. He disappeared so fast. Ugh, never mind. I need to find my mama. Shaking his head, the pig turned around and charged off into the direction he was heading towards before running into the vanishing stranger. On another area of the forest, please, try to escape while you still can. A 16-year-old Elizabeth, who was dressed in a damaged black, skin-tight jumpsuit that came with leggings and long armbands, cried out as she and the mysterious blonde man she encountered were lying in the ruins of the destroyed forest, the latter saving her from being struck by the attack of a large apprentice holy knight by the name of Twigo. Position over Elizabeth in a protective pose. The blonde man was shown to be on the short side with messy blonde hair and a pair of emerald eyes. He was dressed in ordinary, clean white button front shirt and a black sleeveless vest on top with a loosely worn tie, with a broken sword scabbard on his back that is held on by a green leather belt with gold-colored buckles, and finally a pair of black boots. The short, youthful man kept himself over Elizabeth as he turned his head back to look at Twigo with a calm expression. You say that, but I seriously doubt Ease has no intention let either of us come out of this alive. Why? The man turned back to look at Elizabeth at the sound of her voice and saw that tears were starting to fall down her cheeks even though she was doing her best to wipe them away. I was so happy when my friend and I went out to search for the seven deadly sins together, even though I had never traveled anywhere before and I was so nervous and scared. Then we got separated and I walked all that distance until my body collapsed. And now you've been so kind to me, despite the fact that we're strangers, I don't even know your name, that's why I don't want you to get caught up in my problems. A small smile formed on the man's face as he looked down at Elizabeth, my name? It's Meliodas. Ha! Huh? Elizabeth blinked in surprise as her tears came to a halt, 
shock soon forming on her face as she processed what the person over her had just said. You're, but that's not. The silvered-haired girl's gaze drifted to the torn sleeve on Meliodas' left shoulder and saw a red tattoo engraved on it. That symbol, is it a beast? No, a dragon. Enough of this. Twigo stated as he made it over to the two until he was standing over them with his sword held high. The large, armored man swung down with his magic channeled into his sword, only to feel something strike the side of his head just before his weapon could make contact, redirecting his attack into the air away from the two on the ground before causing him to stumble back a few feet. Bringing his gauntlet up to his temple, Twigo brushed his fingers against the tender area before moving it in front of his face to see that there was blood on his glove. The frown on his face grew as he turned his head to see some dust had picked up in the area between him and the two he tried to attack, as well as a figure standing inside of it. Are you okay, Elizabeth? A voice called out from the dust cloud in front of the girl and Meliodas, causing the princess's eyes to widen as she recognized who was speaking. The dust blowing away to reveal a blonde teenager with a serious look on his face and his fists clenched tightly, I've finally caught up with you. And Naruto. A happy expression appeared on Elizabeth's face as she felt relief at seeing the spiky-haired blonde, while Meliodas blinked as he tried to figure out who the new face was. Twigo narrowed his eyes as he stared at the new enemy to appear before him, once again ruining his confirmation of death tallies. Who are you boy? How dare you get in my way? Naruto didn't reply as he stared coldly back at Twigo before turning around to Elizabeth and Meliodas before walking up to them. Ha! Huh? Where are you facing? Do not ignore me when I am speaking to you. But Naruto continued to ignore the man as he walked up to the two still on the ground before lifting Meliodas off of Elizabeth by the back of his collar, placing him back on his feet before turning his attention to the princess. Holding a hand out to her, Naruto has a small smile on his face as he looked down at her. You really had me worried with all the moving around that you did, Elizabeth. The blonde said as Elizabeth took hold of his right hand, allowing herself to be pulled up to her feet. I'm sorry, Naruto. But with all the chaos, Elizabeth trailed off when she watched her friend shake his head with a sigh. Shouldn't it be me who apologizes for leaving you by yourself? Especially since it's my job to keep you safe. Well, we're together again and that's what matters. Naruto shifted his gaze to the smiling blonde next to Elizabeth, who despite his youthful looks and short appearance was someone that the taller blonde immediately recognized. Not to mention, you managed to find one of the seven deadly sins because of it. And it's the dragon sin at that. Wow, so you knew who I was with just a glance, huh? Meliodas commented as he crossed his arms over his chest. That means you crossed paths with our group before. Naruto flashed Meliodas a grin before his face turned serious as he looked back at Elizabeth. You're not hurt, are you? No, I am fine thanks to Sir Meliodas. Elizabeth replied while wiping away a stray tear that had fallen down her face. Good, spinning himself around, Naruto gave Meliodas a quick glance before walking forward. Watch over her while I take care of this guy. Meliodas stared at Naruto with a calm expression as he stared at his fellow blonde's back, studying the younger man as he walked closer to Twigo with an unreadable expression. The dragon sin of wrath could immediately tell that there was something off about the teenager especially when he tried to get a read on Naruto's magical power, it was almost as if. If I remember right, you're that apprentice holy knight, Twigo. You're the younger brother of that idiot Cade, probably just as stupid as him too. Naruto berated as he cracked his neck. How dare you? A look of rage formed on Twigo's face as he raised his sword above his head once again before swinging it down as hard as he could only for Naruto to reach up and take intercept Twigo's attack before the man could finish his swing, impossible. I put enough magic in my sword to destroy this brat with absolute precision, and yet, the knight's eyes narrowed as he stared down at the blonde teenager standing between him and the two a few feet away. The most shocking part was that the blonde was holding Twigo's sword with his bandaged right hand. He managed to not only catch my blade, but somehow managed to withstand my magical attack. Is this really all you have? With a smirk forming on his face, the blonde increased the pressure on his grip causing the blade to start cracking before it shattered into pieces. Staring at the broken shards in his hand, the blonde threw them away while shrugging. Now that's what I call pathetic craftsmanship, though combined with a pathetic excuse for a knight like you, I guess you're a perfect pair. Wow, this guy is pretty good. Meliodas commented as he and Elizabeth watched Naruto intercept and break Twigo's blade. 
He's got the skills of a holy knight, though something seems off about him. I can't sense any magic coming from him at all. Naruto isn't one of the holy knights. Elizabeth started as she brought a hand up to her chest, a small relieved smile forming on her face as she stared at her fellow teenager's back. He is actually my personal knight assigned to guard me, and the reason you can't sense any magic from him is because he was born without any. Wasn't born with any magic, none at all? Meliodas repeated to himself as he crossed his arms over his shoulder. Though he didn't show any reaction to the information, the sin of wrath was shocked at that information. Magical energy was part of every living creature, it didn't matter if it was something like an insect or plant life, a holy knight or a civilian who only had enough to stay alive, and magic was all around them in some way or another. But to hear that there was someone who didn't have a single drop in them was unbelievable, though now that he thought about it, he was sure that he had heard of such a thing from someone in the past. She keeps saying Naruto, see conclusion, I finally figured out why you look so familiar. Twigo shouted as he took a fearful step back, watching as Naruto reached into the pouch on his side and pulled out what appeared to be a black hardcover book that looked like it had seen better days with what looked like a five-leafed clover won the covers. That spiky blonde hair and a right arm completely covered in bandages. A five-leaf clover symbol on that book in your hands. There is no doubt, you are him. The man's words made Naruto's smirk grow wider as the teen held up his book as it started to glow the number magic abomination. So, you do know who I am, that's good. Naruto stated as he held out the book to the side with a smirk growing larger on his face, a strange crimson aura covering the book as it floated off the blonde's hand before opening on its own and flipping through several pages until it came to a stop to reveal an unreadable lettering covering the pages. Then you know exactly what's coming to you for trying to kill Princess Elizabeth. Why you, little brat, with fear flowing through him, Twigo charged as much power as he could into the remains of his sword before swinging it down at Naruto, who continued to smirk as he evaded the attack while smacking the broadside of it away with his right hand, causing Twigo's magic-powered swing to change directions and avoid hitting both Naruto and the two behind him. He was able to deflect my attack with his hand once again. But how? I don't sense any sort of magic coming from him. To the Twigo's shock and Meliodas' surprise, a black sword hilt emerged from the pages of Naruto's book before it was followed by the rest of the sword, which revealed it to be a heavy broadsword with the blade and the hilt separate from each other and connected by its fuller. Despite its impressive size, however, the large weapon was mostly covered in dirt and scuff marks that clearly showed the poor state it was in. Gripping the hilt of his sword tightly, Naruto raised over one of his shoulders with a determined expression. Though this was not what Twigo was paying attention to as he saw a strange shadow-like aura form around Naruto for a brief second before taking a fearful step back. Having magic isn't everything, and redirecting any attack like yours is easy if you know how. Now let's see how you handle this. Punishment for trying to kill Elizabeth. The large man didn't have time to block as Naruto swung the greatsword into the center of his armored chest, but instead of cutting the armor, a large sword delivered a powerful blunt force impact that easily destroyed Twigo's armor and the ground underneath the two of them. Continuing his powerful swing, Naruto sent a seriously injured Twigo flying into the air, his armor continuing to break apart as blood and dust trailed behind him. Twigo only had one thought flowing through his mind as his body came crashing to the ground at the base of the mountain. Such extraordinary physical strength. To think that this boy has no magical power at all. Meliodas let out a whistle as he stared at the remains of the battlefield with crossed arms, not bad. I didn't expect to see the black grimoire in action. Last time I saw that thing, it was picking up dust since no one could use it. Oh, you know about it. Naruto replied as he turned to face Meliodas and Elizabeth while sheepishly rubbing that back of his head with his free hand. I've had it for a while. Got real lucky on it choosing me to wield it. The only problem I have is how dull the blade is. Dull, ha. Huh? I don't see it being a problem if you can do all this. Meliodas replied as he examined the area with a shrug, taking in all the damage created from the battle and Naruto's final attack. You certainly dealt a good blow with that last one. It was his own fault for trying to hurt Elizabeth. Naruto retorted as he positioned the tip of his sword towards the open pages of his grimoire before pushing it into book, causing it to magically return to where it came from. Closing the book and placing it back into its pouch. The blonde walked up to Elizabeth, 
reaching a few feet away from her as the two stared at each other silently for a few seconds before Naruto reached out a lightly chopped the top of Elizabeth's head. Ouch! A small amount of tears built up in Elizabeth's visible eye as she rubbed the top of her head. Why did you do that Naruto? That was for disappearing on me. Naruto exclaimed as he crossed his arms. The combination of worry and anger visible on his face as he reprimanded the girl. Do you have any idea how worried I was? Your safety is my top priority. Elizabeth's eye widened slightly before her gaze fell to the floor. I'm sorry. I wasn't able to find you. So I was worried about what happened to you. I put on that armor so no one would recognize me and I figured if I wandered around long enough we could find each other. Though that may have been a stretch now that I think about it. Ha. Huh. Letting a heavy sigh escape his lips. Naruto scratched the side of his cheek before reaching his hand out and rubbing the top of the princess's head, making her look up at him with a confused expression. It's as much my fault too for worrying you. Forgive me, Elizabeth. Naruto, if you two are done now, I think we should get out of here. Meliodas interrupted with a dull-eyed expression, snapping the two out of their conversation to look over at the dragon sin. Taking in a small breath, Meliodas stared at the two of them with a small grin and his hands on his hips. You two are looking for the seven deadly sins, right, Elizabeth? Well, I guess this means you guys found your first one. Ha, huh, eh? Both Elizabeth and Naruto blinked as they realized that Meliodas was right, leading the latter to take a step forward. So, do you know where the other six are? The shorter blonde shook his head at that, not a clue. But I do have some business to discuss with them, so I've started looking for them myself. The tavern I am running is my way of gathering information on all sorts of things. It can be a bit slow sometimes since I am mostly handling things on my own with a little bit of help from Hawk, but if I had a pretty girl I know we'll get a lot more intel to point us in the right direction. A large grin formed on his face as he placed his hands on his hips, so what do you say? Want to come with us? Elizabeth turned her head towards Naruto and saw that he was mirroring her actions to look at her the two soon starting to smile at one another before turning to look at the waiting Meliodas, we'd be happy to. Awesome. Meliodas continued to grin as he shifted his gaze to look at Naruto, and I suppose Mr. No Magic here can come along too. Having more employees with help out with all the customers we'll get. A look of shock form on Naruto's face after hearing that, I wasn't part of the invite? But before anything else could be said, a strange sound could be heard coming from above their head before a shadow formed around the three, making them look up to see something large and green falling towards them. Moving themselves out of the way with Naruto carrying Elizabeth, the three managed to get out of the way as an extremely large, green pig wearing what looked like a pointed tavern as a hat, land next to them. What the hell? How's that for perfect timing? A familiar voice spoke up as Hawk could be seen looking down at them from the top of the green pig followed by a ladder unrolling down the side to where they were. Way to go, Hawk's mom. Meliodas shouted as he ran towards the ladder before leaping high towards the middle, with Naruto and Elizabeth right on his heels as they secured themselves on the ladder as well. Wait, I'm the one who brought her here. Hawk exclaimed as he watched the three quickly make their way up the ladder. Wait, isn't that the guy from earlier? What's he doing here? Meliodas was the first one to make it up with a grin still on his face, with Elizabeth and Naruto making it to the top with the taller blonde bringing up the rear. He's coming along. Now then, Hawk's mom, let's get out of here. Onward to the next town. With those words leaving his mouth, Hawk's mom started walking off into the distance, leaving the stunned and injured knights staring at the enormous, retreating green pig in shock. N e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l ha ra ha it was early morning a few days later and a shirtless Naruto could be seen standing outside the boar hat bar with the bandages still covering his hand and forearm, and his greatsword in hand, swinging it repetitively in various directions while switching from one hand to two hands. Sweat could be seen pouring down his face and muscular build as he continued kept doing his sword reps, before coming to a stop with one final swing as he heard the door to the bar open and turned to see Meliodas standing at the door with his hands in his pockets. Good morning. Morning. Meliodas greeted with a smile on his face as he made his way down the steps, you're certainly up early. 
I always wake up this early to get some training in. It's been a routine since I was little. Naruto replied as he dismissed his sword and put the grimoire away before sitting down on the surface of Hawk's mom's back before he started doing sit-ups at a fast pace. I can't do a lot in the magic department, so I need to focus on my physical abilities as much as I can. Gotta keep pushing past my limits. Meliodas blinked as he tilted his head slightly, I think I've heard someone say that before. Hmm, oh yeah. That's something Yami Sukahiro used to always say, right? Wait, you know Yami Sensei? Naruto paused in his workout to face Meliodas, surprised to hear that the Dragon Sin and Captain of the Seven Deadly Sins knew the man who taught him how to fight. We've crossed paths a few times in the past. Meliodas shrugged as he looked out at the direction that Hawk's mom was walking in. He was a pretty strong guy if I remember correctly, though I didn't think he would have the patience to take on a student. That guy was a sadist for sure. Naruto muttered to himself as he laid back and stared up at the clouds in the sky for a few moments before speaking up. So, was there a reason you came out here? Straight to the point, huh? I figured it would be better to ask you since I'm sure it's a sore subject for Elizabeth at the moment, but I was wondering about what happened back a month ago in the Kingdom of Lyons. She had told me about the coup d'etat that the Holy Knight pulled before she escaped, but she didn't go into details. Sitting down on the steps, Meliodas motioned for Naruto to join him, to which the blonde made his way up to the older man while grabbing a towel from the pile of clothes and his grimoire. Could you tell me what happened? There's not really much to say really, it happened suddenly after the king called for me and Yami sensei to see him. Elizabeth was there too, though like me, she didn't know why, but I guess Yami sensei had an idea as soon as we heard pounding at the throne room doors. Flashback. Please open the door there's nowhere left to run. Your Majesty. Taking an inhale of his cigarette, Yami, a tall muscular man with black hair and eyes as well as a stubble mustache and beard, who had a lit cigarette in his mouth. He was wearing a simple white A shirt and black trousers that had an extra layer of tan leather that covered from his outer thighs down to his knees and finally black high boots, removed the lit item from his mouth as he stared at the locked door in front of the four. Damn, I didn't think the idiots would actually go through with it. It was only a matter of time, Naruto, you must take Elizabeth and flee from this place. King Bartra ordered, making the blonde and his daughter turn towards him with shocked expressions. But father, you want us to just leave you guys here, but who knows what they'll do to you if we run, a wide-eyed Naruto said as he took a step closer to the king, only for Yami to smack the back of his head and send him stumbling forward. What the hell was that for, Yami Sene? Don't count us out yet, kid. I seriously doubt that they'll do anything to the king, not to mention I'm not going to lie down and let them try to kill me. Even if they don't like it, I'm one of their strongest holy knights still in the kingdom. They won't try to get rid of me yet. Just as it looked like Naruto was about to say something, the black-haired man patted the top of his student's head. Don't waste your time worrying about us. You're the personal knight of Elizabeth Leones, so do you job and protect her. Yami is right, Naruto. You are the only one I can trust with this responsibility. I am not just asking you this as a king, but as a father as well, keep Elizabeth safe. The king stated with a serious expression, making Naruto pause before bowing his head in acceptance at King Bartra's request. Nodding his head at the boy, the man turned to look down at his youngest daughter, Elizabeth, you and Naruto must leave the kingdom at once. I don't want to escape without you, father. A tearful Elizabeth tried to convince her father but the king remained firm as he shook his head. I will be fine. There are still holy knights like Yami that are still in the kingdom. King Bartra then pointed a finger towards the nearby wall. Over there, under the third lamp to the right is a secret compartment that takes you to a pathway that leads out of the castle. Crossing his arms while positioning himself next to the throne, Yami was the next one to speak. If you stick to the shadows like I taught ya, you both should be able to get past the kingdom's gates undetected. Good luck, kid. Yes, sir, don't die on me, old man. Naruto said in a low tone before moving over to Elizabeth and placed a hand on her shoulder, making her turn to look at him. More tears built up in her eyes as she saw the apologetic look on her friend's face before hesitatingly nodding her head and rose to her feet. Holding her hand tightly, the two made their way towards the wall that King Bartra had pointed towards, quickly finding the switch that opened the wall and revealed the stony path. As they entered the secret pathway, they could hear the king say one final thing, be safe and stay strong through this endeavor, you two. Stick together and never doubt each other. 
The two of them were silent as they closed the secret pathway's entrance until only a sliver remained for the two to see what was happening, and much to Elizabeth's horror, the doors leading to the throne room were covered in a brief electrical energy seconds before it exploded. The princess's view of the room ended as Naruto finished closing it with his free hand. Afterwards the blonde gently squeezed the hand he was holding onto, making her turn to look at him. I'm sorry Elizabeth, but we need to go now before they find us. The blonde whispered to his tearful friend, before leading her through the pathway and out of the castle, where they could see trails of smoke coming out of several open windows. But that didn't stop them as they continued making their way until they passed the gates, doing their best not to look back at the chaos happening behind them. Flashback end. We managed to avoid detection for a few weeks, but then someone caught sight of us and I did my best to throw them off our trail. You know the rest after that. Naruto finished as he leaned forward while resting his arms on his knees. Sounds like you guys went through a lot. Speaking of which, Meliodas shifted his attention to Naruto's bandaged arm. What happened there? Looks pretty bad. Oh, this? It's actually not as bad as you think, just an ugly birth deformity. I keep bandages on it so I don't freak people out. Naruto answered before rising to his feet, stretching his arms over his head. I think I've worked out enough for today. I'm gonna wash up before breakfast. Meliodas nodded his head before a smirk formed on his face and pointed ahead, to which Naruto followed and saw a town in the distance, good timing. We're getting close to our next destination. Cool. I'll get Elizabeth after I finish cleaning up. Don't worry about that. I'll go get her. Not a chance. Naruto shouted angrily as he pointed a finger at the shorter blonde, who had an innocent look on his face. But Naruto had no intention of falling for it, having seen Meliodas do multiple perverted things to Elizabeth such as revealing her panties or groping her breasts, to which Naruto would send Meliodas flying in angry retaliation. There's no way I'm letting you anywhere near her while I'm not in the room. I promise I won't do anything perverted. Meliodas gave the teenager a thumbs up with sparkles around his face. A deadpanned expression appeared on Naruto's face as he crossed his arms, that's the same thing you said when you tried to have her sleep in your room, in the same bed, before trying to get her out of her torn clothes. You don't have to worry Naruto, I'll make sure he doesn't try anything, Hawk called out as he emerged from the open door with a puff of steam blowing out of his snout. Thanks, Sir Hawk. I'm counting on you. The spiky-haired blonde said with a relieved sigh before making his way inside the boar hat bar. Hopefully the pig would prevent the perverted dragon sin from trying anything. A few minutes later, what the hell is that outfit? A red-faced Naruto shouted as he shook the shorter blonde by his collared shirt, the sin of wrath having a blank expression as he was thrown into the air, only to readjust himself and land on one of the tables. The blonde wasn't done as he turned his attention to the pig in the room. I thought you were keeping an eye on him, Sir Hawk. Trust me, this was the least perverted outfit he wanted her to wear. I'm sorry his tastes are on full display. The pig apologized as he shook his head. I it's not that bad, Naruto. Elizabeth said as she tried to calm her friend down, though she had to admit that the outfit was more revealing than what she was used to. Out of the torn jumpsuit, Meliodas had given her a new outfit that composed of a pink button shirt with a black ribbon exposing her belly button, a dark mini skirt strapped with a pink belt, a black stocking on her left leg, and black white heels. Sir Meliodas said this was the tavern's uniform. I'm going to need it to wait tables in order to hear any rumors and or possible information regarding the rest of the seven deadly sins. Elizabeth, I'd be more likely to believe that if he wasn't scoping you out from every angle. Naruto pointed out as the bar's owner was doing just that as he circled around the girl and examined her appearance. Hawk stopping Meliodas as he was about to lift up her skirt, he had to admit, the outfit did look good on her. Shaking his head a few times to get that thought out of his head, Naruto let out a sigh as a small redness remained on his cheeks. If we're going to get some intel, we should keep an ear out for anything on the holy nights as well. My thoughts exactly. Meliodas spoke up as he stood next to Naruto while patting the teenager's side, before pulling out a bunch of folded clothes and presented them to Naruto. We've also got a uniform for you too. Huh? Wait, you mean I'm going to be waiting tables as well? Naruto questioned in shock as Meliodas placed the clothes in his hands. Among other things, don't forget that we also get female customers too. Meliodas said cheerfully before pushing Naruto into the back room and closed the door behind him. Don't come out until you put everything on. Excuse me, Sir Meliodas. Elizabeth spoke up, 
making the man and hawk turn to look at her. I've been thinking for the past few days and I've been wondering why so many people are saying that you and the rest of the seven deadly sins are such terrible criminals. I mean, you were kind enough to protect me even though you didn't know who I was, so you can't be that bad, right? If all of you are guilty, what sort of crime did you commit? My crime, huh? Meliodas seemed to give the girl a thoughtful look as he turned away from her while crossing his arms, before turning to look at her with a serious expression. To tell you the truth, ten years ago, I traveled all over Lyons, stealing all the panties I could find. You're joking, right? A flustered Elizabeth questioned as she couldn't believe he could say that with a straight face. Of course I am. Meliodas answered with a straight face, throwing the girl off balance. But the man wasn't done as he rubbed the back of his head and continued, the real crime is that I groped the perfect boobs of a thousand different pretty girls. Gee groping. That's a joke too, right? It is. With a flustered look on her face, Elizabeth had enough of Meliodas' perverted jokes. Please stop toying with me, or is the crime so terrible you can't talk about it? Well, maybe, the seven deadly sins are known as the ones who handle the most brutal of jobs when no one else can, no matter how cruel it might seem. The reason they are called the seven deadly sins is because each member apparently committed a crime that falls under the sin they are labeled under. Naruto's voice called out as he exited the back room, walking towards the stove behind the bar counter, but the crime that they were said to have committed ten years ago was that they supposedly killed the Great Holy Knight. The Great Holy Knight, Elizabeth repeated as she looked from Naruto to Meliodas, who had his usual calm expression. So you know about that, huh? Meliodas tilted his head a bit before nodding his head. The uniform looks good on you, though where's your tie? Those things are a pain, so I decided not to wear it. Naruto was now wearing a white long-sleeved shirt that had the sleeves rolled up to his elbows and the top button undone with a black vest over it and black dress pants that reached his boots. The blonde shrugged as he turned on the stove and started getting ingredients ready to start cooking. He didn't know how to do much, but making a simple breakfast was easy for him. It was kind of hard not to know about what happened when all the drunks in town wouldn't stop ranting about it. Though since I was a kid, I never really believed them. You didn't? Meliodas raised an eyebrow at that. There was no reason for you guys to do it, right? Not to mention the way that he was killed didn't match weapons or fighting styles any of you used. Naruto continued as he took out some eggs and cracked them into a pot, tossing in some spices from time to time. Also, I was a stubborn brat who refused to believe that the old man would do something like that unprovoked. Wow. Talk about a strong denial. Hawk muttered, only for Meliodas to lightly bop him on the head while not taking his eyes off Naruto. So you did know one of us when you were little? The dragon sin deduced as he watched Naruto continued to finish making breakfast as he sliced up some fruit to serve with the eggs. Yeah. That was all Naruto said as he continued cooking until he finished placing the food on three plates while dumping the scraps into Hawk's plate on the floor. The blonde walked over to the nearest table and placed the plates down, now come on, we need to eat up before we get into town. Almost as soon as he said that, the four felt the building tipping and Meliodas immediately moved until he was in front of Elizabeth and allowed gravity to make her fall onto him with his head between her breasts and his arms wrapped around her waist. Though this didn't last long as his head was removed seconds later before one of Naruto's boots collided with it and sent him crashing into the floor, breaking some of the floorboard in the process. What did I say about doing perverted things to her, bastard? The leader of the seven deadly sins simply pulled his head out of the floor without any signs of injury and turned to them with a smile. Hey! Looks like we made it. Let's eat quickly and head into town. N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L Following Meliodas' advice the group finished eating their meals quickly and made it out in time to see Hawk's mom dig herself into the earth until only the building there. Satisfied with the results, the short blonde led the group down the path that led to the village. This is our newest pool of information, Vena Village. Not only is it a good place to get any new intel, but I also came here for their special liquor. Most of my stuff can be bought all over, but Vanya's can only be gotten here. It's made from the finest water you can find in all of Lyon's combined with the gruit that grows along the river. 
This ale has fans far and wide. Maybe so. Hawk spoke up as the group arrive at a bridge over the river, or rather, the remains of a river. But that famous water you were talking about has gone bone dry from the looks of it. The herbs along the bank have withered and died, too. Elizabeth pointed out as the group saw many of the plant life had turned brown or worse. What's going on? Meliodas wondered out loud as he looked from the bone dry river and dead herbs towards the village up ahead. Naruto perked his head to the side as he faced the village as well. Sounds like something's happening. Wow. Look at all the people out here. Do you think some kind of festival is going on? Elizabeth asked as the group entered the village and saw a large e crowd of people surrounding something a little further in. Deciding it was better to just get it over with to find out what happened, Meliodas took the lead as he walked up to the nearest townspeople. Howdy there. Two of the men turned their heads to see the short blonde was walking up to them with Elizabeth, Hawk and Naruto trailing after him. Oh, it's the owner of the boar hat. So what's up? Got a festival happening. Meliodas questioned, only for the men to send them heated glares. This look like a damn festival to you. We're trying to pull out a sword that a holy knight jabbed into the ground. That instantly caught their attentions as the group looked past the two and saw a bunch of men surrounding a single sword that was stuck deep into the group grabbing various parts of the hilt and handles, as well as using rope for multiple people to pull it. Unfortunately none of them were succeeding as the weapon refused to budge an inch. A holy knight did that. Meliodas raised an eyebrow, while behind him, Elizabeth gained a worried look while Naruto crossed his arms with a puzzled expression. But why? The sin of wrath's question was answered by an elderly man that walked up to them. Just the other day, we incurred the wrath of a holy knight. After that, he infused his sword with magic and stabbed it deep into the ground, sealing off all of our groundwater sources under our village. We don't have much time before we lose our gruit too, so we need to get it out quickly. And without either of them, we won't be able to make any more Vena ale. A holy night, Elizabeth muttered as she stared at the sword still stuck in the ground with exhausted villagers all around it. Could it have been the man you defeated the other day, Naruto? Naruto shook his head at that as he crossed his arms. No way. That Twigo guy isn't even on the level of the stronger holy night apprentices, let alone someone as strong as a holy knight. It'd be like comparing the breeze created with a handheld fan to a powerful hurricane. He's right about that. Meliodas nodded his head as he turned to look back at Elizabeth. The holy knight who did this is on a completely different level. Only those with the power of a holy knight can remove the sword of another, the elderly man stated before letting out a heavy sigh. It won't be easy for everyone here to accept but as long as that sword remains, we are done for. Oh no, the worried expression on Elizabeth's face grew at that. Meliodas and Naruto were silent as they stared ahead at the scene before them, the former keeping a calm face while the other had a small frown. Whatever thoughts that were going through their minds came to a halt as they noticed Kid walking past them. Come on, guys. What's with all this moaning and groaning? Many turned to look at the kid with looks of anger and annoyance upon hearing his words. Many of this muttering the name, Mead, as they looked at him. The boy seemed to ignore this as he puffed his chest while placing his fists against his waist. A holy knight's sword stuck in the ground is nothing. My buddies, the seven deadly sins were here, that sword would be gone by now. That instantly caught the attention of the group of four that just arrived. That's enough, Mead. Whose fault is it that we have predicament in the first place? One lady shouted at boy, causing the bravado he was displaying to instantly vanish. Of all the things to say, you have to mention those criminals one top of everything? She's right. Don't piss off the holy knight any more that he is. Do you have a grudge against us or what? No, please, Naruto's gaze softened as he stared at Mead's back as the latter stumbled with his words. That's not the reason I did it. Another villager snarled as he glared down at the boy. We've had all we can take of all your mischief and lying. Mead, you're such a jerk. One of the younger girls shouted while she threw a rock at him only for her bad aiming to completely miss Mead's head and sail right past him before colliding with Meliodas' face. This made his companions look at him with either worry, Elizabeth, blink before brushing off like it was a common thing, Hawk, or look away as he struggled not to laugh, Naruto. It didn't seem to hurt Meliodas though as the rock to the ground and the short blonde looked unbothered by what happened despite the red mark covering a good chunk of his face. HMPH. I hate you guys. Mead shouted at the large crowd that was starting to yell back at him. Yeah, well we hate you more, Mead. 
More of the other kids followed the girl's example and started throwing more at Mead, most of them hitting Meliodas while Naruto moved himself in front of Elizabeth to prevent the others from hitting her. The two watched as Meliodas spun around with Mead in his hands as the midget pushed the kid in the direction of the boar hat, the boy shouting the entire way. Stop it! All of you! The elderly man shouted as Mead and Meliodas disappeared in the distance. Looks like we picked a lousy time to come down here, Hawk commented. Deep down, he's an honest, good-hearted lad. Elizabeth turned her head to look at the elderly man after hearing that while Naruto focused his gaze at the boar hat. Inside the boar hat bar, well, that sure sucked. Though not too bad compared to other times in the past. Meliodas muttered to himself after making it inside his bar and placed Mead at one of the tables. So kid, what was all? Mead was quick to interrupt as he turned to face Meliodas. Don't call me that. You're a kid, too. No, I'm really not. Meliodas replied with a calm face, having been used being called such by many of his customers. What is this, a tavern? Mead asked as he finally got a good look at the place. Yup, the boar hat. The short blonde answered while crossing his arms, it's my place. The boy blinked at that as he looked from the wall of liquor bottles back at Meliodas, well, I'm hungry. If you answer my questions, I'll get you some food. Nope. Food first, then I'll talk. An annoyed look formed on Meliodas' face as he let out a low grumble before walking towards the stove. Fine. I promise it'll be something you've never tasted before. Not much time passed as Mead waited for Meliodas to finish cooking, before the latter returned with a delicious looking dish that was making Mead's mouth water. Whoa, this looks great. I can't wait to dig in. With those final words, Mead grabbed a good portion and stuffed it in his mouth, only to spit the disgusting food out seconds later. Bletch. How's the taste? I promised it'd be something unique, though I never said it would good. Meliodas snickered as he poured himself a drink into a wooden mug, making his way over to Mead's table before situating himself across from the boy. So, was all that stuff you were saying true? About being friends with the seven deadly sins? Hmm. The food was so bad it gave me amnesia. Mead answered after a few seconds, before sniffing the air as a familiar scent filled his nose. Wait a minute, I know that smell, you're drinking Vena Ale. Is it okay for a kid to be drinking that? Taking a few gulps of his drink, Meliodas quietly placed the mug down. I already told you, I'm not a kid. His words didn't seem to catch Mead's attention as the boy started to grin. That stuff tastes really good, doesn't it? Hey. Yep, Meliodas answered with a grin of his own. Getting more of it was one of the reasons we came to the village. It's the best, the sweetest, and so full-bodied, and, at least that's what the adults say. The sound of the door opening caught the two's attention and they turned to see Elizabeth and Naruto walking in with Hawk closing the door behind them, which made Naruto turn to look back at the pig with a raised eyebrow. First the pig was capable of speaking like a normal person and now he could open and close doors? What was next? Styling clothes. Turning his head back to see Elizabeth talking to Mead about how the elderly man, who turned out the village chief, had told them about Mead's pranks and the trouble he caused. He remained quiet as he listened to the princess tell the boy a story about how she climbed a tree and how King Bartra got really injured trying to get her even though he had never climbed one in his life. We were lucky. But if father had died that day, I would never have been able to forgive myself. Elizabeth finished with a sad smile on her face as she recalled that day very clearly. It's not like I don't do this kind of stuff to get a rise out of them. Mead finally said as his hands tightened into shaky fists, all of the goofiness and attitude vanishing to show the uncertainty and sadness he was feeling, something that instantly caught Naruto's attention. They're all real good to me. Standing up, Elizabeth took a few steps closer to Mead and placed a hand on boy's back. So, why do you? My parents traveled all over even before I was born. We never stayed in one place for too long and our journey brought us here. Only, they died after getting hit with the epidemic that was going around town at the time. I was spared from the sickness. Mead explained as he rubbed his eyes as he thought about the loss of his parents. The villagers had taken me in, a complete nobody and took care of me. But even then, I was still alone since everybody had their own, real families to worry about, and I became jealous of them and the other kids for still having their families while I had no one, so I started lying. Pulling pranks. Anything I could so they would pay more attention to me. Is that why you put the bug in the holy night's drink, too? Elizabeth questioned, 
only for the boy to angrily slam his hands against the wooden table. No way. I did it because that knight treated everybody like crap. Mead shouted as he told the four about how the entire village had been excited about the holy knight's arrival, and served him the best batch of Vena ale that the villagers had made in years, and the man's actions that caused Mead to drop the insect into his drink. Leading to the holy knight sealing the water away with him magical sword. That bastard. That holy knight made fools out of all of them by saying it was slightly better than horse piss. The adults, they had put in so much effort to making the best ale, I I, I just. You couldn't stand it that someone like that insulted the people who took care of you, the ones that you treasure so much. All the hard work, all their pride and sweat and tears. The fact that someone would insult all of the heart and effort put into it, and call it worthless really pissed you off. Naruto spoke up as he watched up to the boy, who turned to look up at the teenager and saw a look of understanding on his face. It'd be difficult to not do anything to defend those that had done so much for you. Why yeah, exactly. Mead nodded his head furiously at Naruto's words, making the blonde let out a soft chuckle as he sat next to Mead at the table. You really get it, mister. Why is he called mister when I'm the older one? Meliodas muttered to himself as he took another gulp of the Vena ale in his mug with a small, noticeable twitch of his eyebrow. Hawk let out a sigh as he stared at Meliodas with an amused smile while Elizabeth remained behind Mead with her gaze on both the boy and Naruto. Naruto let out another chuckle, I can understand what you're going through, though my situation was a bit harsher than yours. What do you mean? Mead asked, with a look of confusion forming on his face as well as Meliodas and Hawk. You said that your parents died only a little while back, right? Well, I didn't even know who mine were, for the first six years of my childhood, since the day I was born, I was alone. Apparently I was found abandoned by some holy knight completely by chance, or at least that was what I was told by the orphanage I was taken to before they tossed me out after my fourth birthday. Naruto explained as he held up his right arm to show more of his bandaged arm. See this? Under these bandages is a pretty ugly arm. So messed up that it's one of the reasons why no one even gave me a second glance unless they were glares or disgust. But then I came across someone who actually did pay attention to me, a greedy old man. Meliodas blinked in surprise at hearing that, though he didn't say anything as let Naruto continue. Elizabeth had a sad look on her face as she remembered Naruto telling her about this years ago. It was one of the reasons that she believed him when he denied that the seven deadly sins were vicious criminals. The old man wasn't too bad when he wasn't drunk off his ass, and he actually the first one to actually take the time to teach me anything useful. We had gotten into some trouble because of it, though it was really fun. I actually used to get angry and cause problems for people who would insult him, but it didn't matter to me since if I got in trouble because he was someone I cared about and who cared about me. Naruto explained as he thought back to, that was the first time that I felt like I wasn't alone anymore, but then things happened a few years later and the old man disappeared without so much as a goodbye. There were so many people that insulted him and his friends because they were different and called them traitors, and that pissed me off, which led to me starting fights and getting into trouble. Flashback. Hey, did you hear about what happened the other day? You're talking about the seven deadly sins, right? A townsman replied with a grunt as he and his friends were sitting outside a bar with mugs in their hands, neither noticing a small head turn in their direction. Bunch of traitors and murderers. First they murder the great holy knight and then they take out 300 holy knights before making a run for it. I always knew those freaks couldn't be trusted. Take that back. A young voice called out making the two men turn their heads to see a six-year-old Naruto wearing a long-sleeved blue shirt with the left sleeve reaching his elbow while the right one went over his right hand, which appeared to have bandages loosely wrapped around it, with an orange hooded vest over it and loose black pants that reached above his ankles and toe revealing sandals. Both men stared at the boy with frowns on their faces, with the one who spoke earlier letting a drunken snarl as he started glaring at the boy. Take it back? Like hell I will. Those bastards butchered so many holy knights so easily before running away and leaving the kingdom weakened. I hope all of them die like the dogs they are. The drunk never got to finish his sentence as the boy slammed his fist into the man's face and sent him crashing through the window, shocking his friends as the boy landed on the table between them. Don't you talk bad about them or I'll make you all regret it. The boy declared as he punched a fist into his sleeve-covered hand, his gaze shifting to the other four men still sitting around him. The shock created from his actions soon faded as all of the men shot out of their seats, 
making the young blonde shift his stance with his arms raised. But before anyone could move, a muscular arm could be seen reaching out and grabbing the top of the boy head. A small puff of smoke blew into the area followed by a deep voice, Hey kid. What did I say about ditching me to cause trouble? Watching the boy let out a panicked shout as the large hand's fingers tightened around his head, to which the men to follow the arm to see that it belonged to a calm-faced Yami, who was smoking his cigarette as he held onto Naruto's head. Ah! Let me go, smoky geezer! The boy shouted through the pain, only to let out a yelp as the grip on his head tightened even more. Is that any way to talk to your teacher? I guess I'm gonna have to teach you some respect later. The muscular man said with a calm expression despite his actions, lifting his student off the table and started walking away from the men. Now come on, there are people waiting for us. Hey idiot. Next time keep your brat on a tight leash. One of the men shouted causing the muscular man to come to a halt. What did you call me? The man asked as he slowly lowered the boy to the ground, removing his hand from his head making the blonde let out a sigh of relief as he rubbed his cranium. Too wasted to notice the change in the black-haired man's stance, the man drunkenly walked up to the muscular man and started talking again, you heard me, ya stupid muscle head. Or do you not have a brain in that thick skull of yours Aj? This time, the black-haired man spun around as he backhanded the drunk and sent him flying into the table, causing it to shatter upon impact and knock the guy out. That's what I thought you said. The man stated as an intimidating aura surrounded him as he cracked his knuckles, making the other men start to sweat as he continued to talk. All right kid, here's a quick lesson for you. Always finish what you started. Yes sir. The boy grinned excitedly as he let out a small cackle, following his teacher's example as they slowly approached the now sweating drunkards. A little while later, I can't believe you, Yami, getting into a brawl, destroying a bar and sending over a dozen men to the hospital. A woman dressed in armor was standing in front of the slightly dirtied up, muscular man, now revealed to be named Yami, who seemed be dismissing the woman's words as he glanced to the side while smoking his cigarette. You're a holy knight, show some grace and be less of a reckless buffoon. Yeah, yeah. It's not like I was trying to do so much damage. People just kept wanting to join in when they saw me and the kid keep thrashing everyone trying to hit us. Yami explained with a casual shrug which caused a twitch mark to form on the back of the woman's head. Currently the three were standing outside of castle belonging to the Lyons royal family, rulers of the kingdom of Lyons. Yami and his student had arrived at the castle after causing a brawl that quickly caught the attentions of the military and were greeted by a female holy knight named Charlotte Roselay, who was an old friend of Yami's and a platinum-level captain of a female-only order of knights. The guards at the gate and several other knights were watching as the woman reprimanded the two, some with jealousy at how the normally stone-cold beauty of a woman usually ignore men and focused only on her duty as a holy knight. This was especially true after all of the chaos that had occurred during the destruction left by the most powerful order of holy knights known as the Seven Deadly Sins when they killed the great holy knight Zaratros and three hundred of her now deceased comrades. Crossing her arms over her armored chest, Charlotte shifted her gaze to the scuffed-up boy standing next to Yami. Which is another reason for you to be more responsible. What if something happened to your student? You're supposed to be teaching him how to fight and defend this kingdom and its people, not attack them. Relax, will ya? It's not like we killed any of them, so no harm done. Yami replied as he took his cigarette out of his mouth. You keep talking like that and you'll never find a guy who'll marry you. Will you stop saying that? I am perfectly fine with giving the battlefield my full attention. That's pretty sad. Say one more word and I'll kill you. Those bastards deserved it. The young boy spoke up, making the two adults turn to look at him to see he was glaring at the floor with clenched fists. They were talking bad about the old man, like they knew everything about him and his friends. Noticing some of the looks they were getting from the nearby guards, Charlotte and Yami exchanged a glance before focusing on the boy. The former letting out a sigh as she started reaching a hand out to the boy, Naruto, I know you don't want to admit it, but the truth isn't something you can ignore, no matter how much you want them to be otherwise. The newly named Naruto lifted his heated gaze from the floor and slapped Charlotte's hand before it reached him. But something doesn't seem right. People would notice if they actually cared enough to look. Gritting his teeth, Naruto spun himself around and ran away from the two adults, who stood and watched as he disappeared from sight. Flashback paused, it was around that time that I met my teacher and he took me under his wing. 
Naruto couldn't help but laugh as he remembered meeting Yami for the first time and practically forced the blonde to become his student after literally dragging him across town to his squad's headquarters and threatening him if he didn't agree to become the Holy Knight student. But still, I was going through a lot as all the nasty looks and loneliness really affected me, and for a good while, I wondered if I was destined to be alone. Really? And then what happened? Mead asked as he was listening to Naruto's story, feeling a small connection with the blonde upon hearing his story. His answer was a grin that appeared on Naruto's face as he turned his head to look at Elizabeth, who perked her head when she met his gaze. I heard someone call out to me and saved me from that loneliness. Flashback resumed. Naruto had ran through the crowds of people in the streets, doing his best to ignore the looks of hatred and disgust that numerous people were sending his way as he ran past them. Something he was used to by now. It wasn't long until he had found himself in the middle of a small park that had a small pond in the center of it, and luckily there was no one in sight as he made his way to one of the trees and sat down against it, bringing his knees to his chest as he rested his forehead against them. Naruto's shoulders trembled as he struggled to hold back his tears, ones filled with frustration and loneliness. Yet another thing his was used to feeling. Um, excuse me? Are you okay? A voice spoke up from above his head, making Naruto lift his head up and look around in confusion as he saw no one around. I'm up here. Blinking at what the voice said, Naruto tilted his head even more until he was looking up the tree to see a smiling young girl with long silver hair and blue eyes sitting on one of the tree branches, wearing a yellow dress that looked like something a noble would wear. Rising to his feet quickly while keeping his gaze on the girl, the blonde boy found that he was unable to speak as he looked up at her for a few seconds before a question escaped his lips. What are you doing up there? I was just enjoying the nice weather and view from up here. The girl answered before a concerned look appeared on her face, are you alright? You look sad. I am fine. Naruto denied as he quickly rubbed away any of the buildup of tears that tried to form. Really, then how about you join me? The girl asked as the concern was replaced with a warm smile as she stared down at him. A frown formed on Naruto's face as he looked around briefly to see if there was anyone else in the park before looking back at the girl while pointing at himself, you seriously want me to go up there? Of course, there's no one else around but you and me, right? The smile was replaced by confusion as a thought went through her mind. Oh, wait, are you scared of heights? No way. Naruto instantly denied the implication before making his way to the base of the tree before making his way up towards the branch where the girl was sitting before placing himself next to her with a smug grin. See, I'm just fine. To Naruto's surprise, the girl smiled once again while clapping her hands. Wow. That was amazing. I've never seen someone my age climb up so fast before. Um, thanks. Turning his head away from the girl as a small bit of redness formed on his cheeks, Naruto's attention shifted as he felt a breeze brushed against his face making him turn his head to see the top of several buildings and the clear sky above their heads. Whoa. See, I told you it was nice up here. The girl stated as she tilted her smiling face a bit with her eyes closed. I'm Elizabeth. What's your name? And Naruto. While the boy didn't notice it at first, he soon started to feel a smile form on his face as he and Elizabeth continued to converse. Flashback end. It was after meeting Elizabeth here that I started to meet more and more people, and I started forging even more bonds with them. I want to do my best to never give up on those bonds for anything. Turning his head back to look at Mead, Naruto reached out and patted the boy's head. You really care about the villagers, right? Never give up on those feelings. I'm sure they still really care about you as well. Everyone was silent as they processed what Naruto said, until another voice spoke up. So, what about you saying you're friends with the seven deadly sins? Meliodas spoke up, making Naruto and Elizabeth blink as they realized that they had gotten distracted with what happened with Mead and the villagers. A small blush formed on Mead's face as he scratched the back of his head with an embarrassed laugh. I was lying about that. Sorry. The dragon sin sighed in disappointment taking a final sip of his ale from his now empty mug, that's too bad. I figured it might have been a long shot, but still kinda had my hopes up. What made you tell a lie like that? Elizabeth asked as she wondered why the boy would say such things when it came to the seven deadly sin, who were considered to be world-renowned criminals by many. The young boy scratched the side of his nose at the princess's question, looking down at the disgusting food that was still on the plate Meliodas had given him. The seven deadly sins are wanted by the holy knights, aren't they? 
if they're really going after them, doesn't that mean that the seven deadly sins are the good guys instead of the holy knights? The newest employees of the boar hat went silent as they turned their heads to look over at Meliodas, who had poured himself another mug of Vena ale, only to gulp it down seconds later. Feeling that he was being watched, Meliodas turned to see that the two teenagers and Hawk were staring at him. What? Is there something on my face? All three of them sweat dropped at that, though a small smile formed on both Elizabeth and Naruto's face seconds later. The moment was interrupted as they heard something coming from outside. That's coming from the village. Mead shot out of his seat at this before rushing out the door leaving the three and one pig behind. Both Meliodas and Naruto were silent as they both slowly stood up from their seats with matching serious expressions. Center of Vena village, back in Vanya village, the villagers were still standing around the Holy Knight's sword, which had still not budged an inch after Mead was led out of town by Meliodas. Two knights, one that was tall and skinny while his companion was shorter and larger with a mustache on his face, had come into town and were now standing in front of the sword. Now, listen up, you village riffraff, the taller of the two shouted to the crowd, while his fellow knight snickered behind his mustache and goofy sneer. If you haven't pulled out the sword by sundown, then we're going to charge you ten times the normal product tax. The villagers all gasped and stared at the two men in horror, but that's insane. With no water, there's no way we can even make one bottle of ale, much less ten times that amount. Another villager shouted as more voiced their complaints as well. That's your punishment. The larger knight replied as he scolded the villagers like children with a wagging finger. You not only insulted a holy knight, you also claim to be friends with the seven deadly sins, known vicious criminals of the kingdom. As the crowd angrily glared at the two knights while muttering curses under their breaths, Mead was seen darting past the villagers and the knights, before coming to a stop in front of the lodged sword and wasted no time in trying to pull it out of the ground with all the strength he could. Mead, an older woman cried out in worry as she watched the boy struggle. Kneeing on either side of the boy as he tried in vain to pull out the sword, the two knights sneered and scoffed at Mead. The taller one let out a grunt as he stared at the struggling boy. So you're back, huh? This isn't going to be any fun at all if he's the only one trying. So now, the levy charge will be twenty times the original amount, the fat knight shouted as he got in close to Mead's face, but the boy ignored his words as he continued to pull as much as he could, even as some of the villagers began to react negatively to the boy's actions. You know you can't pull out that sword. Stop it kid. You're only making things worse for us. This continued until one voice could heard from within the crowd, that's enough. All of the citizens of Vena village quieted almost instantly as they turned to see the village headman walking through the parting crowd with his hands resting behind his back and a stern look on his face. Chief? The elderly man's frown deepened as he continued to speak to the people of his village. Who was the one who wounded our pride as alemakers while insulting the skills that have been improved and refined in the decades since our village produced its first drink? Was it mead? No, it was not. The firmness of the headman's words made many in the crowd surrounding him bow their heads in shame at how their actions against the orphan, that boy was only expressing the feelings we were all feeling deep down inside us, showing more bravery and heart in his actions than any of us were willing to do ourselves. You really care about the villagers, right? Never give up on those feelings. Naruto's words echoed through Mead's mind as he continued pulling at Holy Knight's sword with all of his strength with memories of how the entire village had been there for him after his parents died. Even if the village chief was saying otherwise, Mead knew that it was still his fault that the water had dried up and the gruet was dead. There was no way he would give up on trying to make things right, because, he loved Vena village and all of the people in it. Mead's thoughts came to a halt as he felt a soft hand place itself over his gripping the hilt while the other rested against his back, making him turn his head to see the innkeeper with a kind look on her face, Auntie? The village chief is right, the woman started to say began as she flashed the boy a warm smile, you aren't to blame for this, Mead. The innkeeper wasn't the only one as the other children rushed to Mead's side and started helping him in trying to pull out the sword as well. But they were only the first as all the other menfolk in the village walked up to the children and lightly pushed them out of the way before tying several ropes around the hilt once Mead had let go. All of the fear and aggression that was pouring out of them before had completely vanished as they all worked together to get the sword out of the ground. Hey! Didn't you people hear what we said? Apparently the actions of the villagers didn't agree with the two knights as they were the ones becoming irritated instead, 
but all of the strongmen in Vanya village continued to ignore the two as they gathered around each line of rope and started to pull as hard as they could, with mead in front of all of them. It's twenty times now. Twenty. Let's do it. All of the men roared as they heaved, giving it everything they had to pull the sword out as the women and children watched with worry and anticipation. But even with all of their efforts, the weapon didn't budge even a fraction of an inch. This only made the two knights get red in the face as they downed their booze, laughing from their spot on the sealed well while watching the group continue to struggle. They were finding entertainment in how much the villagers were suffering and happily getting drunk from their show. Come out. Mead muttered as he gritted his teeth, tears building up over his eyes as he continued to pull as hard as he could, despite feeling an intense pain coming from his hands turning an angry red from the resistance. Come out, damn it. The knights cackled louder at this, he looked so desperate. What a bunch of morons. As the drunk idiots were about to clank their mugs tother, they noticed that the hands were now empty and stared at their vacant hands in confusion. The two were snapped out of their confusion as a voice spoke up. I may not drink alcohol, but anyone who can't appreciate good quality stuff doesn't deserve to enjoy it. The knights turned their heads to see two male blondes walking towards the crowd, the taller blonde propping a giant black sword over his shoulder with one hand while the other had both knights' mugs. Meanwhile, the people of Vanya village still held fast onto the various ropes pulling on the sword, before each one of them snapped from the strain and sent the men to the ground. The women, children and the village elder watched in horror as the men groaned in defeat while dust filled the air, until they caught sight of Meliodas and Naruto walking towards the sword still stuck in the ground, the two avoiding all of the men with ease. Here you go, Meliodas. Naruto said as he passed the two stolen mugs over to the shorter blonde, who helped himself to the ale in both as the two walked up to the sword firmly embedded into the ground before coming to a stop. You guys mind if I give it a stab? Huh? Mead and the other villagers stared at Naruto in confusion as he moved his greatsword off his shoulders before bringing it close to the exposed part of the Holy Knight's sword. While some thought that he was going to strike the weapon, they were surprised to see Naruto simply tap it with the edge of his large sword. Nodding to himself as he pulled his greatsword back, Naruto stabbed it into the ground to hold it in place before reaching both hands out and took the Holy Knight's sword hilt in a tight grip. I'm not old enough to drink yet so I can't enjoy your Vanya ale unlike the guy next to me. But for now, how about the two of us pay for those two drinks with this? The large smile on Naruto's face thinned as he started pulling on the sword, feeling some resistance at first before he started using more of his strength, causing cracks to form under his feet as he used more and more strength in his efforts. The villagers and the two knights watched in awe as the sword slowly started to give as it slowly rose up from the ground a few veins forming along the exposed parts of Naruto's arms as he continued pulling the sword out. Letting out a powerful shout as he made one final tug as the sword looked ready to pop out, and to the villagers' delight, it did, before the sword went flying out of the blonde's hands as he started to fall backwards from the sudden lack of resistance. But before he hit the floor, a smirking Meliodas moved behind him with one hand pressed against Naruto's back and help him stay on his feet. Not bad at all. Looks like we don't need a second try, huh, Naruto? I just don't like the idea of giving up. Naruto replied as he looked back at the dragon sin with a large grin. Besides, it was a lot easier after I disrupted the magic flowing through the sword. Cancelling out magic even for a few seconds can really help out, so all I needed to really worry about was the strength that was used to stab it into the ground. Cancelling out the magic, so that sword can use anti-magic, huh? Meliodas thought to himself as Naruto adjusted himself and walked over to his black sword before pulling it out. None of the villagers could not believe their eyes as they stared at the two smiling blondes stand next to where the sword of the Holy Knight used to be. Even all of the men working together had failed to remove the weapon from the earth, and yet the taller employee of the boar hat, who seemed to have a modest build under his uniform, was able to do it by himself. Meanwhile, the sword was still airborne as it spun wildly until it landed right in front of the two soldiers, who were now shaking in fear as they saw that both Meliodas and Naruto were now looking at them. But that's impossible. One of the knights said with a gaped mouth, both he and his companion couldn't believe what had just happened, and yet neither were drunk enough to have imagined such a thing. Only a holy knight could pull that sword out, so how did a mere teenager? You two might want to move. Naruto spoke up with a smirk as he pointed at where the two men were sitting, to which they blinked in confusion until a rumbling could be felt coming from the ground around them, 
the vibrations getting stronger by the second. Finally registering what the blonde was hinting at, two sweat-coated men exchanged a look of realization. Before the wooden seal of the well they were sitting on burst open and a powerful spout of cool, clear water burst from the well, sending the two flying off. The released water showered over the village square, sparkling in the sun like millions of diamond droplets, forming rainbows over the cheering villagers. Can't say I didn't warn them, Naruto muttered as he held out a cupped hand to catch some of the water before bringing it to his mouth. The magicless knight took a few gulps of the water in his hand before his eyes snapped open in amazement, sparkles shining in his eyes as he grinned widely. Hua, this is the best water I've ever tasted. Told you so. Meliodas replied with a grin of his own as the villagers around them continued to cheer, with some of the children running around and playing with the waters that had been returned to them. Turning his head to where the two knights had landed, the shorter blonde made his way over to the two, grabbing the removed holy knight's sword along the way before coming to a stop in front of them. The two knights let out pained groans as they tried to piece together what had just happened, only to look up and see a smiling Meliodas with sword in hand, until he tossed it to the floor in front of them. This is yours. Don't want to forget it. Both men once again quivered with fear, one of them quickly taking the sword before they ran from the village as fast as they could, whimpering like children the entire time until their forms disappeared into the distance. Meliodas turned himself around to see all of the excited villagers move about and enjoying their newfound freedom from the holy knights, a smile still on his face as he looked at all of the happy faces until he caught sight of Elizabeth talking to Naruto as the blonde sealed his sword back into his grimoire. While the smile on Meliodas' face dimmed lightly, it still remained as he watched the two. After watching Naruto in action and listening to his story, the dragon sin could kind of see why Yami took an interest in Naruto and why the blonde was made Elizabeth's personal knight. Even without magic, the teenager had a lot of potential and courageous heart filled with kindness, the latter being something that a lot of the current holy knights seem to have lost, hopefully it wouldn't become a problem down the road. Hey, mister. That was so amazing. Naruto and Elizabeth turned to see Mead walking up to the two of them with admiration in the boy's eyes. While he had originally dismissed everyone from the boar hat as people who asked too many questions and assumed they weren't anything special, especially after the eating the horrible food the shorter blonde had cooked. But after seeing what just happened, only one thing flashed through his mind, about the people that were considered criminals by the holy knights. Are you really? Nobody special. I'm just the magicless idiot that works at the boar hat. Naruto interrupted with a grin as he looked down at Mead placing his hands on his hips while Elizabeth let out a small giggle at her knight's words, at least, until he finished his sentence. Working with a boss that's a perverted midget, a talking pig and a clumsy crybaby for a waitress. And Naruto. A red-faced Elizabeth whined at the title as she beat her fists against a smirking Naruto's shoulders, something he had used to call her when they were younger that always annoyed her. I told you to stop calling me that. As the proprietor of the fine drinking establishment and your boss, don't forget that you have to do whatever I order you to. Meliodas spoke as he walked up to the group with a deadpan stare, something that scared Naruto a little as the magicless teenager let out a gulp. Satisfied with Naruto's reaction, the dragon sin turned his head to look over at Mead, who was trying to figure out if the group was really part of the seven deadly sins. Enough about us though. Don't you have something else that you need to focus on? Confused at the man's words, Mead turned around and saw that the villagers had stopped celebrating and staring in their direction with looks of shame on most of their faces. The village chief was the one who spoke up with an apologetic look himself. Look Mead, we were wrong, could you ever forgive us for treating you the way we did? Mead shook his head as he weakly tried to dismiss the elderly man's words. What right do I have to forgive all of you? It's not like I'm not a part of the village. The boy was shaken out of his thoughts as he felt someone push him forward lightly making him turn to see that Meliodas behind him as he lowered his hands to his waist. Go on. That was all Meliodas said as he smiled at Mead, even as the boy turned to face him with Elizabeth, Hawk and Naruto standing behind the midget. Wh what the hell? What do you mean, go on? Neither Meliodas, nor the three standing behind him, answered the boy. He slowly turned back to look at the villagers while softly denying his place in Vena village only for tears to build up in his eyes as the people across from him started to say his name multiple times, until he finally broke down and rushes over to the large crowd with tears falling down his cheeks. You can lie to yourself all you want, 
but there's no way you'll be able to fool your own heart. Blinking a few times at Meliodas' words, Naruto turned his head towards his fellow blonde and noticed a somewhat depressed look on his face. A similar look appeared on Naruto's face as he looked back at the villagers surrounding Mead, yeah. This time, Elizabeth was the one to look at the two and blinked in surprise. Despite the difference in height, build, etc., it was surprising to see how similar the two looked in that very moment. Later that night, a toast to Naruto of the boar hat. Cheers. Inside the boar hat, the tavern was bustling with customers from Vanya village, celebrating the blonde employee's achievement and ridding the villagers of the cruel punishment that would have ruined them. Naruto merely smiled as he worked hard on serving people ale and other liquors from the bar counter and cooking up some simple meals for people to enjoy, having some difficulty with keeping up the pace. I'm dot not sure if I'm ready. It's the first time I've done something like this. My heart is pounding. Naruto turned his attention turns to the nervous Elizabeth as he heard her speak up, seeing her standing behind the counter a few feet away with a wooden tray in her hand. It was understandable seeing the girl so nervous, since being a waitress was at the very bottom of things that you'd expect to see a princess do. Meliodas was nodding his head at this, leaning a little closer to her as he spoke. I see. So, it's your first time. Could you just say that again, but slower? The sin of wrath was rewarded with an empty mug slamming into the back of his head, courtesy of an annoyed Naruto glaring at his back. Stop acting like a pervert towards Elizabeth, or I'm sending you through a wall. Get some work done, you pervert. Hawk shouted in agreement as he stuck his head over the counter. Meliodas ignored the small, cartoonish lump that formed on the back of his head before giving the princess a comforting smile, leaning back on the counter as he gave her advice. Tell you what. Just focus only on being a waitress for today. Don't worry about gathering intel. The most important thing to do is relax, especially in this kind of work. And yet, you've got me pretty much doing everything else. Naruto muttered to himself with an annoyed look as he cooked up some fried rice. The blonde didn't know that many recipes, but he knew how to make some things. Shaking his head a few times before looking over at Elizabeth, who seemed to hype herself up into being relaxed. Take things one step at a time, Elizabeth. If you try to do too much at once, it'll backfire on you. All right. I can do that. Elizabeth exclaimed as she went to work and walked to the first table, leaving a slightly worried Naruto and blank-faced Meliodas to watch as the princess kept messing up repeatedly by either tripping whenever she rushed to a table, accidentally causing an ale-filled mug to spill over a man's head, and misstep while throwing the food into a customer's face. The princess made her way over to a window as Naruto took over in being the waiter for a bit while Hawk cleaned up all the messes that were created. Oh yeah. Looks like there won't be any shortage of scraps tonight. An excited Hawk said to himself, enjoying the scraps created from Naruto's food over the crap Meliodas makes. Naruto patted the teary eyes Elizabeth on the head as she stood next to the bulletin board that had the wanted posters of the seven deadly sins. Don't let it get to you, Elizabeth. These things take time to get used to. Yeah, a disappointed Elizabeth replied as she watched Naruto handle some of the tables with a smile on his face, but that only made the girl feel worse. Even if it was an experience she had never done before, the silver-haired girl wanted to be useful to her traveling companions, but instead she was just causing trouble despite the reassurances she was given by the customers and Naruto. You've never waited tables in your life before, have you? Eep. The princess nearly jumped out of her skin at the sudden voice and looked down to see Mead standing next to her. The boy had a grin on his face as he looked up at her, it's so obvious that a blind man could tell. You completely suck at this job. Now that's enough, Mead. Don't you start mouthing off again. The innkeeper from earlier shouted from behind the boy, making him and Elizabeth look at the older woman as she continued, did you learn your lesson from today? A little ways from the three. Naruto was watching them with a bitter smile as the older woman seemed to say something that surprised Mead, causing the boy to quickly apologize to the woman. The teenager looked around the room and saw that everyone was content as they chatted with each other, before placing his wooden tray on the counter and walked past Meliodas, who was cleaning some mugs. Sorry, but I'm gonna get some fresh air for a little bit. Meliodas watched as his fellow blonde made his way out the door, waiting a few minutes before he followed the teenager outside and found Naruto on the steps just outside the door. The magicless teen was silently staring up at the moon and stars with his hands resting on the floor at his sides. What are you doing out here? You followed me outside. Naruto questioned as the dragon sin walked next to him. Why? 
I'm not going to be out here long. No reason, really. Just felt like coming out here. Meliodas replied as he settled down next to Naruto, though his attention seemed to be more focused on the sky ahead. An eerie silence fell upon the two as they both stared out at the empty village below and the night sky above their heads, before it was interrupted by Naruto letting out a low chuckle. You know, I actually lied a bit to meet earlier. Really? Meliodas continued staring up at the sky. I had said how the old man took an interest in me even when others ignored my existence and treated me like a freak, but really, I was the one who took an interest in him. Naruto admitted as he rested his arms on his knees while leaning forwards, it was just by chance, or probably on a whim, but he actually saved me from a bandit trying to kill me. I was amazed by how easily he beat the guy before walking off like nothing happened, though he did take everything the thief stole from me. Sounds just like him. Meliodas thought to himself as a white-haired man flashed through his mind. I chased after him for a good while, even after he got annoyed by it and gave me back everything that was stolen. I kept following him though, and begged him to teach me to be strong and a good thief. He said no almost immediately, an exhausted laugh escaped Naruto's lips as he recalled what had happened, and how aggravated the man had been when Naruto managed to follow him even after the former's attempts to ditch the kid. I kept asking him for days whenever I saw him around town, until finally he decided to teach me something, he spent days showing me how to steal from simple people without getting caught, before he started teaching me a few more things whenever he wasn't drunk off his ass at the time, I wasn't lying when I said that it was fun, though, to him, I was probably an annoying kid that he couldn't wait to get rid himself of, sorry for rambling. It's just, seeing me back there, with all those people that care about him, got me thinking about the past. A whiskered-faced brat that doesn't know when to quit, wants to become my apprentice. Meliodas finally spoke up, surprising Naruto as he looked up at the dragon sin in shock. What did you say? That's what Ban told us one day out of the blue. Meliodas kept the blank expression on his face as he stood up from the steps to move around until he was near the cliff. King would get pissed off whenever Ban bragged about the student he took on to learn the art of thievery especially when we would later get reports of a young boy and someone matching Ban's description being seen running with sacks of stolen goods on them. Ban wouldn't stop grinning and talking about how much the kid soaked up his lessons like a sponge. Hey, sounds like the old man when he's wasted. Naruto commented as he recalled Ban calling him a whiskered-faced brat many times in the past. Maybe so, the short blonde shrugged as he finally turned to face Naruto a strangely serious look on Meliodas' face as he spoke. But it was also because of that, that Yami discovered you and took you under his wing, and how you ended up meeting Elizabeth, hmm, maybe a little to the left. Naruto blinked a few times before looking down at the ground, a small smile on his face. I guess the old man was looking out for me in his own, stupid way, thanks, Meliodas. No problem. Can't have you pouting out here while Elizabeth is taking care of things on her own. As soon as the words escaped the sin's lips, the two heard the sound of crashing followed by apologies coming from the princess in question. A soft grinning Naruto looked back at the doorway before turning back to Meliodas, I don't mean just coming out and talking to me, for whatever reason you had behind it, I also mean helping Elizabeth out when we got separated. I can't imagine what I'd do if anything happened to her. You both have a long road ahead of the two of you. Gathering all the seven deadly sins, Saving the kingdom from the Holy Knights and protecting the people that are suffering because of the Holy Knights. Meliodas turned his head back to looking up at the sky, taking in some stars twinkling brightly overhead. I can tell that the both of you are trying everything you can to make a better future. Elizabeth wouldn't have found me if she wasn't doing everything she can, and as her knight, you are giving everything you've got to support her. Everyone has their own specific roles to play. Their specific roles, huh? Naruto repeated to himself before noticing that the smile on Meliodas' face was switched with a serious look as he focused his locked onto something in the air. The magicless knight's eyes suddenly widened as he sensed something coming in from a large distance and coming in fast, rising up to his feet quick and rushed up to Meliodas' side before looking in the same direction that the shorter blonde was and saw something shining as it was coming in close. The object soon came into view and was revealed to be a spear covered in lightning that looked like it was about to strike Vanya village and the surrounding area, only for Meliodas to push Naruto out of its reach before catching it with one hand, but the force made the sin of wrath and the lance fly off the cliff towards the village below. Shit. Meliodas. Naruto. What's going on? 
A worried Elizabeth called out as she ran out of the tavern towards Naruto next to the cliff. Though the blonde didn't take his eyes off of Meliodas's figure as the man continued down the mountain before heading towards the village, crashing into a few empty buildings in the process. Is that Sir Meliodas? He was able to sense that attack way before it got into my range. Naruto thought to himself as Meliodas soon came to a stop in the middle of the village, narrowing his eyes as he watched the dragon sin spin around before throwing the weapon back in the same direction it had come from, with even more strength than what had been sent towards them. Holy crap, that was all Naruto could say at that moment as he watched the spear disappear before a second even passed. There was no doubt that the attack had come from a holy knight, a powerful one at that, and more than likely, the same holy knight that left his sword into Vena village. Whoa, just look at that mess. Hawk exclaimed as he and the villagers exited the boar hat to see the destruction that was caused. Naruto. We have to get down there. Elizabeth said as she looked over at her knight snapping Naruto out of his thoughts before he nodded his head at her orders. Wrapping an arm around her waist with one arm while grabbing a startled hawk with his free hand, Naruto leapt off the cliff much to the pig's dismay and the villagers' shock before the large group headed towards the path leading to the village. Ignoring the squeals coming from the pig tucked under his arm, the blonde teenager used various boulders sticking out of the cliff face as stepping stones until the three were on the ground level and let a slightly shaken Elizabeth and Hawk stand on their own. But the three didn't wait for the villagers as they ran towards the destroyed village as fast as they could until they caught sight of Meliodas, who seemed to be uninjured except for his torn left sleeve and the blood covering his left palm. Sir Meliodas, are you alright? Yeah. The dragon sin replied as he stood up. Was it the same holy knight who left his sword in the ground? Elizabeth asked as she saw the villagers finally arrive and see all the destroyed buildings. No doubt about it, I think that's our cue to get out of this village as soon as we can. Naruto spoke up as he looked at the damage caused by the spear that Meliodas had intercepted, not wanting to find out what would have happened if it had been successful. Seeing the captain of the seven deadly sins in action certainly erased any doubts that Naruto may have had since meeting the midget being able to sense the incoming attack from so far away, intercept it before tossing it back. That took a ridiculous amount of skill and strength. Especially since there was only one person that Naruto knew of that used that kind of lightning magic. Staring down at his bloody palm as he shook it a few times, Meliodas nodded his head as he looked up. Agreed. If we stay here for too much longer, we'll be putting this place in even more danger. It'd be nice if we had a place to hide from the holy knights for a bit. Hawk added. Elizabeth blinked a few times at the pig's words before recalling something she heard earlier, now that you mention it. What's up? Meliodas asked as he, Hawk and Naruto turned to the princess, who was in a thinking pose. Earlier, Mead had said he'd do anything to not go to the forest of white dreams. Elizabeth explained as she thought back to the conversation she had earlier with Mead and the innkeeper, in fact, he said that even holy knights steer clear of it. No holy knights, huh? Naruto commented as he, too, went into a thinking pose. That sounds perfect. Hawk snorted happily at the suggestion. That settles it. Except we're not going there to hide. Meliodas nodded his head, before punching his fist into an open palm with a grin. Because we're gonna be doing exactly what we're supposed to be doing. A confused Hawk tilted his head at that, what does that mean? If holy knights don't want to go into this forest, then it is the perfect place to hide, and start looking for the next one. Naruto spoke up as he figured out what Meliodas was driving at, his words leading Elizabeth to also piece it together as a smile formed on her face. Okay, time to find another sin. Meliodas declared as he led the group back Boar Hat, where Hawk's mom was waiting for them. Saying their goodbyes to Mead and the other residences of Vena Village, the group headed off while the sun started to rise in the distance. As Hawk's mom started her journey towards the Forest of White Dreams, the group turned their attention to Elizabeth as she let out a yawn, which made Meliodas grin. Okay, it'll be a while before we arrive at the forest. So let's rest up for now. I'll take you to your bed, Elizabeth. Okay, Elizabeth, now just take things slowly and walk to the table. Hawk ordered as he stood on one of the chairs with his front paws resting on the table, patiently watching Elizabeth as she stood several feet away with a tray of empty plates in one hand and a tray of empty mugs in the other. It's no good if you rush and cause a mess like the other night, so keep calm and focus on just delivering the meal. Right. 
The silver-haired girl replied with a look of determination on her face, doing her best to keep the trays balanced in her palms as she slowly took one step at a time, doing her best to avoid some of the makeshift obstacles that the talking pig had set up to simulate a busy tavern. Elizabeth maneuvered herself around what was supposed to be standing customers, two stacks of barrels with one having a mop tied to its side to represent an outstretched arm, keeping her gazed focused on the table that Hawk was waiting. Just focus and relax. Focus and relax. Don't forget to keep taking steady breaths, Meliodas called out to the girl from his place behind the counter, smiling as he rested his chin on the palm of his hand. Taking a deep breath as she walked around another table, Elizabeth nodded her head at the dragon sin's words. Why yes. After making her way through a few more obstacles and reworking her balance on the trays, a bright smile formed on her face as she placed the trays in front of Hawks. I, I did it. Good job, Elizabeth. A heck of a lot better than your first time as a waitress. Hawk congratulated the girl. It's all thanks to the practice you, Naruto and Sir Meliodas had been helping me with. I'm just honestly surprised that Meliodas actually helped instead of being a pervert the entire time, which is good since we can't afford to keep repairing the holes that Naruto keeps making. Pouring himself a drink, a grin formed on Meliodas' face as he watched the excited princess enjoy her small victory, and completely brushed off Hawk's side comment. Just a little more mock waitressing and you'll be ready by the time we reach our next intel spot. You're definitely going to be popular with the customers. I, I wouldn't go that far just yet. I still need to work on dealing with actual customers and situations. Elizabeth denied while sitting herself next to Hawk, memories of all of her mistakes flashing through her mind, before pumping her fists in front of her face. But I'll be sure to do my best to help out as much as I can and not get in your way. Hey. Just don't go wasting any meals that's meant for the customers, unless it's Meliodas' horrible cooking. Hearing Naruto's voice coming from the entrance, Elizabeth, Meliodas, and Hawk turned to see the taller blonde standing at the entrance of the tavern, shirtless and covered in sweat with his grimoire pouch hanging from his brown leather belt with a his shirt draped over his shoulder. Oh, Naruto, you finished your training already? The princess asked as her blonde knight entered the tavern with a slightly exhausted look on his face raising herself from her seat to greet him as he walked up to them. Yup. Worked up a good sweat. How about you? It's been going great. Sir Meliodas and Hawk think I'll be ready to work the next time we reach a village. Elizabeth answered with an excited look on her face. I'll actually be able to help out and be useful during our journey. Naruto let out a chuckle as he walked up Elizabeth, smiling brightly at her before briefly patting her head. I have no doubt about it. You might be a clumsy girl but the determination of yours always shines through. Hee hee, thank you, Naruto, the smile on Elizabeth's face brightened at Naruto's words of encouragement. Ever since they were kids, he always supported her whenever she wanted to do something, while others impeded her actions due to her status as the youngest princess. It would get the two in trouble from time to time, especially Naruto since he was supposed to be watching over her, but that did not mean that whatever activities they got involved in was not enjoyable. Meliodas had an unreadable expression on his face as he watched the two interact, before they were interrupted by a certain talking pig. Holy crap, you seriously stink. You've been working out non-stop for the past few days after we left Vanya village. Hawk shouted as he stared down at Naruto, who plopped himself down at one of the tables. If I wasn't sure that you've had some education, I'd think you were just a musclehead. That's just rude, Sir Hawk. Naruto replied with an annoyed expression as he accepted a fresh towel being offered to him by Elizabeth. We have been traveling for four days now, and luckily we haven't run into any holy nights yet. But you never know when one will show up, so I am keeping myself prepared for the unexpected. I'm just a little disappointed that I can't do my normal set since we're riding on Hawk's mom. What exactly is considered a normal workout for you? Let's see. Usually I get some stretching in first so I loosen up my muscles, before taking about 30 laps around the Kingdom of Lyons while wearing special weights, though the number varies on whether or not I've got any plans after training, I can't do that here unfortunately. After that, I do about two sets of strength workouts with 1000 reps of stuff like push-ups, sit-ups, crunches, etc. For some exercises I like to strap weights to my body to give me some resistance, like boulders or something. As Naruto continued his explanation, he didn't notice the freaked out expression forming on Hawk's face as the blonde listed off more and more of what his training involved. Once I finish those, I move on to training with my black grimoire, 
practicing my swings and strength training, or there are times that I spar with Yami Sensei. Elizabeth usually visits during that time, so I take a break and have lunch with her, and then I focus on Ki. What the hell? There's nothing normal about any of that. Hawk interrupted with a shout, pointing his front paw at Naruto. That kind of workout would cripple a normal person, so how can someone without magical power do all of that? With hard work. Naruto replied with a grin and sparkles around his head. Hawk gawked at the blonde teenager, he's a monster like Meliodas. It's true. Naruto is one of the hardest workers I know. A smiling Elizabeth had stars in her visible eye and her clenched fists in front of her face. I remember once, he had to fight off three large magical beasts while wearing restraints and had over a dozen stakes strapped to his body. That, that sounds completely idiotic. Well, they were Yami Sensei's pets, so it's not like he was gonna let me get killed or let me get put into any dangerous situation, probably. Thinking back to that day, the smoking man had wandered off after saying something about wanting to avoid a wild beast that was stopping by, wasn't that also the day that he had met his second teacher? A shiver went down Naruto's spine as he thought about the second holy knight that had decided to take an interest in him despite the blonde not having any magic, thoroughly training him in hand-to-hand -hand combat and other skills that would help him. Most of his workouts stemmed from the combined training that both holy knights put him through. Part of him wondering just how the vermilion-haired woman would react to Naruto taking Elizabeth and disappearing from the kingdom, and scared. Sounds like you've gone through quite the ringer. Which is good for a journey like this, Meliodas said with a laugh as he walked up the three with one hand in his pocket while the other was holding a steel mug. We've got an hour or so before we reach the Forest of White Dream. Plenty of time for you to rest up. Here, a refreshing beverage. Thanks. Naruto nodded his head as he took the mug from the shorter blonde before bringing it to his lips and took a big swig of it in his mouth. That was a big mistake. PFFTT. Elizabeth, Hawk and Meliodas watched as Naruto do a spit take with the beverage that he had just attempted to drink, before coughing a little as he threw the mug at Meliodas who caught it with ease and without spilling a drop. What the hell, midget? Why are you giving me liquor? Don't you know that a good hard drink after a workout is always refreshing? Meliodas replied as he started drinking from the mug himself. No sense in wasting a mug of ale. I can't believe that Yami trained such a wimp that can't even handle a little alcohol. I'm too young to drink the stuff. Don't you know that it's illegal to serve minors? Well, technically, I am a wanted man. So, normal laws and ideals don't really apply to me. The dragon sin retorted with a shrug, causing Naruto to stumble a little at the truth behind Meliodas' words. How about you, Elizabeth? Wanna try some? We could share. I am good, Sir Meliodas. The princess waved her hands to reject the offered drink, it wouldn't be right be drinking beverages that could be served to customers. But that's one of the perks of owning a place like this. No one can tell you what you can and cannot drink. So, the two of you don't need to worry about stuff like that. Come on, you know you want to. Deciding to interfere with the Dragon Sin's attempt at corrupting the two, Hawk leapt up and placed his paws on Meliodas' side before pulling the smaller blonde's hair with his teeth. Enough of that. You just want to get the two of them drunk so you can do pervy stuff to Elizabeth. Why would I need to get them drunk? In any case, like I was saying before, we should be reaching the forest soon. Why don't we get something to fill our stomachs before we arrive? That way it won't get in the way of our search when we start looking for one of the other sins. Meliodas said as he grabbed Hawk by the ear and lifted the pig away from his body, before turning his head towards Naruto with disgusted look. But before we eat, you need to wash up. You seriously reek and I don't want the smell to stink up the place. Naruto was about to make a snarky comeback when he felt a hand softly pat his shoulder and turned his head slightly to face Elizabeth who had a small smile on her face despite her other hand pinching her nose. We'll wait for you to come back before we eat, so take your time Naruto. You say that, but you don't know how to cook and Meliodas food is terrible. Naruto thought to himself before letting out a heavy sigh. All right, fine, I can take a hint. A shower would be nice, but before I do that. Hmm. Meliodas blinked after suddenly finding himself tied up with rope strapped to one of his tavern's chairs with little maneuverability available to him. The dragon sin turned his gaze towards Naruto, who was looking down at him with his hands on his hips. Is this really necessary? I'll gladly untie you as soon as I come back. Kneeling down closer to Meliodas, pointing a finger at his face as he spoke. After the last time I left you guys alone, 
There's no way I trust you not to do something perverted to Elizabeth when I'm not in the room. Um, Naruto? Don't you think this is a little much? Elizabeth said as she came to Meliodas' defense, only to get a deadpan stare in response. Not in the slightest. If anything, I'm sure the guy could probably escape any time he wanted. Naruto stated while looking down at Meliodas, who was actually moving both himself and the chair he was tied to towards Elizabeth in an effort to peek under her skirt. Several twitch marks formed as Naruto's eyebrow twitched. Elizabeth's sweat dropped as she watched Naruto kick the chair upside down, causing Meliodas front to hit the ground, before placing Hawk on top of the flipped chair, making sure to press hard into the wood and force Meliodas' face to grind against the floor, though it didn't seem to bother the dragon sin that much. Meanwhile, Sir Gilthunder, riding on a horse and dressed in a dark-colored full-body knight armor, a relatively tall young man with slightly curled, short pink-colored hair and blue eyes was focusing on the path in front of him and his squad of lower-class knights. The upper half of his armor had several crosses into along with the symbol of the holy knights, while his sword was hanging off his waist. The young man was silent for a few seconds before responding, What is it? We've been traveling for several days now after finding out that the party we are looking for left the village and headed southwest. Pardon me for asking. But how do you know that they are heading towards the forest of white dreams? Only the insane would enter that cursed place. The reports given to me stated that a teenage blonde wielding a giant black sword was able to pull out a sword that I had personally placed into the ground, and that he was traveling with a young boy and a teenage girl with silver hair. Later that day, I sent that spear towards Vanya village with more than enough power to leave significant damage only for it to be thrown back at me with equal force without any injuries to be accounted for. Gilthunder stated, not even having to look back to see the scared looks on the knights' faces at the possibility of facing the holy knight's wrath. I know for a fact that it was the younger-looking boy that was responsible for it. There are only a few people that I know of that bear those descriptions and can pull off such feats. Why yes, as you've said before. Gilthunder continued his explanation while briefly closing his eyes. It is a strong possibility that after catching our attention, the trio will be doing their best to avoid confrontation. So, going to a place that even holy knights would normally never go would be the ideal hiding spot, not to mention a possible meeting place. Sir Gilthunder? I've heard terrible stories about that place. Supposedly a horrible monster dwell there. A few holy knights that have gone into the forest have never been seen again. Finally turning his head to look back at his men as he brought his horse to a halt. Gilthunder narrowed his eyes at the now frozen men. If you and your men are going to act like sniveling children, then I share go to the forest of white dreams on my own. Huh? Be but sir, all you would be doing is getting in my way. Now leave me to do my duty and return to your stations back at the tower. I don't have time to waste on cowards. With that said, the holy knight flicked his rein, signaling his stead to continue heading in the direction of the forest of white dreams. The pink-haired knight ignored the calls of the men he was leaving behind, his focus only on what was ahead of him, and the confrontation he knew that would occur soon enough. Meliodas, Naruto. Meanwhile, high above Gilthunder's head, a crow was soaring with its red glowing eyes focused on the holy knight. Later that day, watch your step, Elizabeth. Naruto, dressed in his normal clothes again, said as he held out a hand to the princess, helping her cross a small trench while Hawk managed it with a long jump. With all this fog around here, we all need to be careful not to injure ourselves. Right. The princess replied as she successfully jumped over the trench with Naruto's help, before shifting her gaze to the dead trees and roughed up earth that was visible through the heavy mist spread throughout the forest. With how quiet it is and all this fog surrounding us, the forest does feel like I'm in a white dream. If only the trees were livelier. I don't think this is a dream I'd like to be stuck in. The blonde knight mirrored Elizabeth's actions to get a good look at the area before he and the silver-haired girl followed after Hawk with Meliodas bringing up the rear a few feet back. Who knows what is actually in this place? I don't know. We've been in here for three hours and haven't seen any animals or any people. An uneasy Hawk commented as he stopped walking midway of the upwards hill, which lead up the mountain of dead trees and fog to an unknown location, much too small for the pig's mother so they were forced to leave her behind but for some reason, I am getting a bad feeling. Sir Meliodas, is one of the other seven deadly sins really hiding in this forest? Elizabeth asked as she and Naruto turned to face the sin's captain, who was leisurely walking up to the two teenagers with his hands in his pockets and a calm expression. 
probably. It took a lot of restraint for Naruto to not try and bash Meliodas against a tree after hearing his nonchalant answer. The role models in his life rubbed off their violent natures a little too well. We came here without any solid evidence. Hawk exclaimed with an irritated look, before turning his gaze to the path ahead. You know, rumors say that there's a terrifying monster lurking in this forest. Naruto squinted his eyes as he rubbed the back of his head. That monster might actually be one of the Kaiai, the young knight didn't get to finish his sentence as Elizabeth let out a startled, followed by hearing an uncomfortable noise. Immediately turning his head to look back at the princess, Naruto's worry was replaced with irritation once he got a good look at her. And Naruto, help, as something is touching me from behind. The teary-eyed girl cried out as she felt something grab onto her and wouldn't let go, not realizing that it was actually Meliodas was groping her ass under the short skirt. Just relax. It's me, Roaring Lion. Naruto shouted as he decked Meliodas in the face with his bandaged right hand, sending the shorter blonde flying and crashing through several trees away. Reaching out his other hand to grab the princess by her shoulder before gently shoving her behind him, an upset expression on his face as he pointed at the ruined pile of tree. God damn it, you stupid midget. Just what the hell are you doing at a time like this? Naruto, at least it wasn't something terrifying like a monster. Elizabeth said in an attempt to quell her knight's anger. Hawk shook his head as a sigh escaped his lips. I don't know. That seemed like the best way to make the creep stop in my book. That was actually a pretty good solid hit. Meliodas called out as he quickly removed himself from the destroyed tree he was currently stuck to. Though unlike the other times when Naruto had hit him, this blow had left a mark as the dragon sin's cheek was slightly swollen with a bruise mark and a small dribble of blood coming out of his mouth. You called that the Roaring Lion. The power and execution of that attack reminds me of another holy knight. Especially since I know that Yami doesn't know that much combat that didn't involve his sword. Yami Sensei taught me a lot of stuff when it came to fighting, but his style mostly focuses on swordsmanship. I learned how to survive and fight hand to hand from my other instructor. While I can't enhance my fists with magic like she can, my master made sure that they definitely leave a destructive impact. She... Hawk's eyebrow raised at that. Elizabeth's eyes seemed to sparkle as she filled in the pig and sin's inquiry. Naruto's second teacher is without a doubt the strongest female knight in the entire kingdom of Leones, if not one of the strongest holy knights with her incredible fire magic and physical prowess, Lady Meryl Leon of Vermilion. You're certainly excited about her, huh, Elizabeth? Hawk commented as he saw the look on the princess's face. Well, that's to be expected. Naruto said with a small grin on his face as he thought back to his fiery instructor. Master is not only a powerful holy knight, but also has royal blood coursing through her veins making her a noblewoman. Both of these facts make her a strong role model for a lot of girls whether they want to follow the path of being a holy knight or live a normal life. I remember her being a very loud and aggressive woman who would rather use her fists than words. Though judging from what I've heard these past 10 years, that doesn't seem to have changed. Meliodas added as he walked up with the group, placing both of his hands into his pockets as he got closer to the two teenagers, to which Naruto placed himself between the shorter blonde and Elizabeth as a human shield. Going back to our current situation, I do have a little evidence on how a sin could be here. Traveling through the forest of white dreams has been difficult for us on foot and would be even more so on horseback. It's so hard to get your bearings that even people with experience would go around this place instead of straight through. A look of understanding formed on Elizabeth's face after hearing Meliodas' explanation. This place would definitely be the ideal spot to hide out. That's actually not a bad theory, and like I was saying before, this monster from the rumors could be the sin defending themselves, makes me wonder who it could be. Any guesses, Meliodas? Naruto asked the sin as he started following him up the path, only to stop when he noticed that a certain someone wasn't walking with them and instead seemed to be examining the back of her skirt. Is everything okay, Elizabeth? Noticing that she was getting curious looks from all three of her traveling companions, Elizabeth quickly waved them off with a weak laugh. I it's nothing, I'm fine. Oh, okay? Well, if you need to stop and rest for a bit, we can find a spot up ahead. Naruto said upon seeing the flustered look on the girl's face and assumed that it was because the girl was starting to get tired after non-stop walking for over three hours. All right. Tilting his head in confusion as he noticed that Elizabeth continued touching her butt as if she were, looking for, something, 
a frown formed on Naruto's face before turning to look at Meliodas, who kept moving as if he had done nothing wrong, which didn't fool the magicless teen in the least. Meliodas felt himself get lifted off of the ground by the back of his collar and turned his head slightly to look back to see an annoyed Naruto staring back at him. Hey, what's up? I don't know what you did with them, but you better return them to Elizabeth. Ha! Huh? Return what? The innocent expression on the dragon sin's face didn't deter Naruto as he continued to glare at Meliodas in silence. You really are a killjoy, you know that? I am not, you perverted midget. Meliodas had a small smile on his face while lifting one of his hands to reveal pink panties spinning on his finger. You need to relax more often. You're still in young, so enjoy your youth. Naruto. What are you doing to Sir Meliodas are those my panties? Elizabeth cried out in shock before snatching them away while a completely red face. You stole them? Come on slow pokes. Let's get a move on wood ya. An angry hawk shouted towards the three from his spot in front of them. Don't be in such a rush. Nobody likes traveling with a nervous piggy. The amusement on Meliodas shifted to one of surprise while Naruto rubbed his eyes a few times before a similar expression formed on his face. What had once been a single talking pig a few meters ahead of them had was now nine. Each of them looking at the other hawks in shock. It's a herd. Hawk said as he looked around him to see all of the identical pigs huddled around him. They're all me. What's going on? Elizabeth, who managed to put her panties while her male companions were distracted, look at the arguing group of pigs with a befuddled look. This is the monster of the forest? Now that's terrifying. Meliodas said as they watched all of the hawks bicker and move around, making it harder for them to find the original. And annoying. Naruto added before crossing his arms and thought, letting out a soft hum. But this situation does give us a bunch of food that would last us a few days. All of the hawks let out frightful squeals upon hearing Naruto's words, only for their fears to grow upon seeing the grin that appeared on the blonde's face. The princess of Lyon looked at her knight with a small frown on her face. Naruto, that's not funny. Hawk is our friend. What? I haven't eaten pork in weeks, and I have a craving for bacon. Watching as Elizabeth's frown deepened, Naruto let out a disappointed sigh. Fine. Not like I was actually going to do it. Meliodas, help. One of the hawks cried out as he and the other hawks rushed towards the trio. Naruto wants to eat me. No, help me. I'm the real hawk. Hey, zip it, Porky. Meliodas hummed in a thoughtful manner before he jumped forward using brute force alone to strike down all the hawks in quick succession that sent them crashing into a giant heap of pigs with massive lumps on all of their heads and swirly eyes. He's not a nice man. One of the hawks whimpered in pain. Oh, hawk. Elizabeth said in worry. All the hawks jumped up crying before hurrying behind Elizabeth to hide from Meliodas while Naruto studied the scene with crossed arms as the dragon sin walked up next to him. Elizabeth, help! All of the hawks cowered together behind the girl with their shaking behind sticking out. Please, even my mom wouldn't hit me like that. I don't want to be eaten either. Uncertain on what to do as her gaze shifted among all of the hawks. Elizabeth was unsure on what to do or who to help as she couldn't figure out who was the real pig and who were the fakes. But those thoughts didn't last as the extra hawks suddenly started to change their appearances and took on Elizabeth's appearance. Naruto and Meliodas took notice to even more copies of Elizabeth appearing out of nowhere and drew closer to the shocked Elizabeth and Hawk, mixing the former into the crowd before anything could be said. This just keeps getting weirder and weirder. True, but I like this scenario a lot more. Meliodas said with a grin. Naruto sent the shorter blonde a deadpan stare while Hawk stumbled back to stand next to the two. You're something else, ya know that? Sir Meliodas, Naruto, a mixture of the group of Elizabeths calling out to the two blondes. You know I'm the real one, right? No, I'm right here. Don't trust these fakes. Who are you calling fake? As all of the Elizabeths began to argue with one another, Meliodas, Naruto and Hawk watched silently as they tried to figure out which Elizabeth was the actual princess. Well, that was until Meliodas grinned widely with an enthusiastic look on his face. Wow, what a bevy of boobies. Look, this is not the time, Hawk said. Punching the dragon sin upside the head, Naruto sent Meliodas a brief glare before turning back to the multiple silver-haired girls standing in front of them. He's right, we need to get rid of all these fakes quickly and continue onwards. Leave this place. A voice called from somewhere in the mist, 
surprising Hawk while Naruto and Meliodas looked around to try and track the voice's origin. Leave. Get out of this forest, humans. The magicless knight's eyes narrowed upon hearing the second voice echo around them. But he didn't think much about it as he noticed that all of the Elizabeths were now making their way towards the two men and talking pig. Naruto. Sir Meliodas. Ha, huh, I really can't tell which one is which. Meliodas said as he crossed his arms over his chest, it's too bad that we gave Elizabeth back her panties, that could have helped us out. How would that have helped? Hawk squealed. Naruto said nothing as he took a few steps forward to intercept the incoming Elizabeths, shocking a few of them as he pulled out his grimoire before summoning his sword from its pages. All of the girls were taken aback by the hardened stare looking back at them, none of them able to speak as the blonde teen suddenly charged forward and seemed to vanish. The next thing that Hawk saw, Naruto reappeared several meters away with an arm wrapped around a confused Elizabeth's waist while all the others were sent flying into the air from, what the pig had to guess, Naruto's strikes. They exploded into puffs of smoke before creatures in dark cloaks emerged and made a run for it to disappear into the fog. You okay, Elizabeth? The princess stared up at Naruto for a few seconds before nodding her head, giving the blonde knight the okay. They're just hide and seeks. Prankster imps, Hawk said in surprise as he watched them run away. You took care of all of them so fast. How did you find the real Elizabeth so quickly? I'm Elizabeth's personal knight. After all the years we've spent together, I know her key reading by heart, so all those imposters didn't fool me at all. Seeing the confused look on the pig's face, Naruto realized that Hawk had no idea what he was talking about and decided to give a short explanation. Key is the physical, natural energy that people and objects emit, rather than the spiritual side that magic energy. Every person or thing has a unique signature that is impossible to replicate. It was how I was able to track Elizabeth down after we had gotten separated and predict Twigo's attacks that allowed me to deflect his attacks. So, he's a key manipulator, huh? Yami and Maroliona sure took an interesting kid under their wings. Meliodas thought to himself as he listened in on Naruto's explanation even though his gaze was focused on the retreating imps. While learning how to read ki and being able to use it was an extremely useful skill, it wasn't something that just anyone could learn. Even the dragon sin could admit that he had difficulty with being able to use it. That's incredible, hey, wait. Then why didn't you use that a minute ago when they were copying me? The lumps on Hawk's head were still throbbing from Meliodas' blows. I wasn't sure if they were a major threat or not, so I left it to Meliodas to take care of the situation," Naruto replied while awkwardly avoiding Hawk's gaze, knowing full well that the captain of the seven deadly sins would probably not hold anything back. We can continue this later, let's follow those prankster imps before they disappear," Meliodas directed before taking off in a run. Right. Elizabeth and Naruto nodded their heads in agreement before following after the dragon sin with Hawk at their side. N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L N E L Following the prankster imps for quite a few minutes the group of four managed to keep the creatures in their sights despite the mist playing a large role in blocking their view. It had been their initial hope that wherever the imps were heading would lead them to something else in that direction since they had been in such a hurry to retreat upon being discovered, and it looked like their optimism paid off as they caught sight to a silhouette in the distance. Wait, look, Elizabeth called out, it's a girl. True enough, as they drew closer to the figure, they were able to make out female figure slumbering away on the ground with a peaceful look on her face, only to discover that the girl was not as little as they originally believed, as she was easily several times their size. The sleeping woman had medium-length brown hair tied up into large twin tails and had a particularly well-developed and curvaceous body. She was wearing a short-sleeved one-piece orange suit with matching colored boots that had five crossed laces that extend almost up to her knees and two fingerless gauntlets of a blue-gray leathery material covered in shiny steel studs. Hawk took a step back in shock as he took in the girl's true size, whoa, she's big. No way, she's a giant, Naruto stated in awe before a look of excitement formed on the blonde teen's face, that's so cool, I've always wanted to meet a giant. Lady Diane, 
One of the imps cried out as they tried to wake the giant up. Lady Diane. The second imp echoed. The final imp was sweating badly as it spoke up as well. We're so sorry, Lady Diane. We accidentally allowed the holy night trespassers to come into the forest. Ha! Huh. Did they just call her Diane? Naruto tilted his head as he tried to recall where he had heard that name before. Trailing down the giant's form, Elizabeth's eyes widened as she halted her gaze on a red tattoo that was located on Diane's left outer thigh. T that tattoo on her leg. It looks similar to the dragon symbol you have on your arm, Sir Meliodas. Yeah, but it looks like a snake to me. Hawk commented as he and Naruto followed the princess's gaze and studied the tattoo on the sleeping girl's leg. A giant, and a serpent symbol, hmm, scrunching his face in thought. Naruto's eyes popped open seconds later as he uncrossed his arms, a large smile on his face upon finding his answer. Of course, she's the serpent's sin of envy, Lady Diane of the Seven Deadly Sins. Yup, that's her all right. Meliodas confirmed, dismissing the looks of surprise on Elizabeth and Hawk's faces as he watched the imps continue to try and wake the giant up. Diane's eyes finally snapped open to reveal two purple irises, slamming one of her hands into the ground as she sat up off the ground and rose to her feet. Did you say that some holy knights got in? Whoa, she's huge. Hawk squeaked at the intimidating shadow Diane was casting over them. No, we're not holy knights. Elizabeth denied in a meek manner as she tried to speak to the giant, only for Diane to scoop Meliodas up in her hand before bringing him at her eye level. Elizabeth and Hawk looked around in shock as they wondered where Meliodas suddenly disappeared to. He's gone, Elizabeth said. You both might want to look up. Naruto said while pointing up with a small frown, silently hoping that they could clear up the misunderstanding about being holy knights before a battle broke out between them and the recently discovered sin. Following the direction that the blonde's finger was pointing in, both Princess and Pig let out startled gasps upon seeing a calm faced Meliodas in Diane's angry grip. Wow, a midget and a giant, you can really see the height difference between them. You're a holy knight. Diane questioned while glaring at Meliodas. Hold on, you're not going to eat him, are you? Hawk asked in concern, only to hide behind Naruto as the serpent Sin looked down at them. Take it easy, Lady Diane. The magicless teen called out while holding his hands up in a peaceful manner. Please listen to what we have to say. We aren't holy knights or your enemies. Elizabeth was the next one to speak up with a worried look on her face. He's right, so release Sir Meliodas. Diane blinked at their words before it clicked in her mind that the girl in the group had addressed the man in her hand by a name that the giant knew very well. Bringing her hand closer to get a better look at the smaller blonde, Diane stared at the dragon sin with a narrow gaze. Sir Meliodas? Yo, Diane. Meliodas greeted the giant in a casual manner easily brushing off the predicament he was currently in. It's been what? Ten years already? After a few more moments of staring at Meliodas' face, Diane's entire face lit up and stars formed in her eyes upon finally recognizing him. Captain. The delighted brunette cheered before gently bringing Meliodas' head to her cheek and rubbed against it. Captain. 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 I missed you so much. Um. I. Guess that means we're in the clear, right? Naruto finally said as he, Elizabeth and Hawk watched the scene with bewildered expressions, she certainly cheered up pretty fast. You're telling me. Hawk replied before tensing up when the giant looked in their direction after hearing them speak. He did not like the look in her eyes. Captain, you've thought of everything, haven't you? Diane asked. You remember how much I love whole roasted pig. Hey, wait. I'm not for eating, lady. Hawk begged as Diane reached down to grab him. Luckily for the talking pig, Naruto quickly got in between them with his arms stretched out. Sorry, Lady Diane. But you can't eat Hawk. Even if he does look and probably tastes delicious after being cooked. I remember him smelling pretty good after getting burned once in the kitchen. Meliodas added from his spot in Diane's grip. Don't use such weak arguments to defend me, you bastards. Hawk whined with a twitch mark forming. A look of disappointment briefly appeared on Diane's face before it switched to curiosity and she knelt down to get a better look at Naruto and Elizabeth, who was walked up behind her knight. Okay, but who are you two? It's an honor to meet you Lady Diane, I'm Naruto and this is Elizabeth. Naruto introduced him and the princess, taking notice to the giant zoning in on the silver-haired girl behind him. 
we're currently traveling with Meliodas on a journey to find you and the rest of the sins. H how do you do, Lady Diane? Elizabeth called out while bowing her head a little, feeling excited and nervous to meet another deadly sin. So, it's been you and these two traveling together, Captain? Diane questioned with a smile on her face as she stood up straight again. Well, Naruto's more of an extra, along with the talking pig. WHO are you calling an extra, midge oxygen monohydride crap? Whatever anger Naruto felt quickly switched to fear with his eyes turning white before pushing the startled Elizabeth out of the way just as the smile on Diane's face vanished. The giant then threw Meliodas towards the area where Naruto was still standing, the impact hard enough to crack the ground, sending dust and rocks flying everywhere. You filthy womanizer! Diane shouted as the dragon sin skipped like a rock across the ground before colliding with a large boulder that caved in upon impact. Raising herself off of the dazed hawk, Elizabeth rubbed the back of her head as she felt a little roughed up. Ow, ha! Huh. Lifting her head up a bit, the princess looked at the area in front of Diane where she had been previously standing and saw that Naruto was laying face down with a bunch of rocks comically piled on the upper half of his body while his legs were visible and twitching. Naruto. While the princess and hawk rushed over to help her knight, Diane sunk down to her knees while bawling her eyes out. After all this time, I'm finally back with the man I love, and he's with another woman. Naruto, are you okay? A worried Elizabeth asked as she knelt down and began to remove the rocks from the blonde's back with Hawk's help, only for an annoyed Naruto to push himself off the ground seconds later with a small drip of blood falling down the side of his face. Lifting up a hand to the top of his head, Naruto winced lightly as he felt the large lump from where Meliodas collided with him. She didn't even hesitate to throw him into the ground. If I hadn't sensed her key flare up just then, we would have gotten seriously injured. Meliodas was thrown into you with the force of a cannon and then you were buried under rocks. No offense, but how did that not knock you out? The blonde shrugged his shoulders at the pig's words, I've suffered through worser punishments, but I've got to say, the rumors about the strength of the giants don't do them justice. My poor, delicate hearts shattered into a million pieces. Diane cried out as tears fell down her face, before looking down at the uninjured Meliodas as he walked back to the group. But still, if you have an explanation, I'm ready to hear them. What's there to explain? The dragon sin rubbed the back of his head while coming to a stop in front of Diane. Honestly, there's not. Unfortunately, Meliodas didn't get to finish speaking as Diane started hitting him rapidly with her fists. I don't want to hear your excuses. Diane snapped angrily with tears in her eyes while continuing to pummel her captain. You little, lying, pervert, philandering shrimp, womanizing bastard. I've met three of them so far, and I'm starting to think that every single one of the sins is messed up in the head. A dumbfounded Naruto whispered to Elizabeth as they and Hawk watched the giant go from bawling her eyes out to suddenly attacking Meliodas with a barrage of rapid punches while shouting insults at him. Luckily, they had managed to create some distance between them as to not fall victim to Diane's wrath. Which was good, since Naruto didn't want to go through that again. That's not nice, Naruto. The princess replied back, only to let out a small squeak as some large rocks nearly hit her, only for her knight to smack them away before they could come close to the three. I don't know, she seems pretty nuts to me. A stunned hawk stated in agreement to Naruto's words. Do you think Sir Meliodas is going to be okay? Sadly, I doubt that will do more than bruise him. What the heck is that guy made of? Naruto placed a hand on his hip as he watched Diane continue to attack Meliodas, tearing apart the area in the process. I think this will probably last for a while, so why don't we take a little break? Twenty minutes later, once Diane finally cooled down after her explosive venting, Meliodas, who was covered in dirt, bruises and lumps, began to explain the situation and the reason why the group had come to the Forest of White Dreams to look for the giant. Both Elizabeth and Naruto couldn't help but marvel at the damage dealt by the giant. The former took in the injuries that Meliodas sustained, though it didn't seem to bother the shorter blonde, while her knight was looking at the destroyed area and the large crater left by Diane's final attack. Exchanging a silent glance towards one another, the two friends looked back towards Diane who was listening calmly to the dragon sin while in a Caesar position. So, to put an end to all the corruption and to stop the holy knights from continuing their rampage, Elizabeth and Naruto are on a quest to locate all of the seven deadly sins. Meliodas finished while brushing off the dirt on his clothes. I didn't know about that. 
Diane said while looking repentant of her earlier actions before lightly knocked herself on the head a sheepish. Guess, I'm the only one who jumps to conclusions like that, aren't I? Forgive me. Turning her gaze to the other blonde in the group, the giant continued with her apology, and I'm sorry for throwing the captain into you, Naruto. Hearing the serpent sin apologize, Naruto rubbed the back of his head with a weak smile on his face. No problem. Not exactly how I wanted my first meeting with a giant to go, but still, it could have been worse. Diane then turned to Elizabeth while narrowing her eyes at the princess who stiffened. You really aren't in that kind of relationship with the captain? T that's right. Elizabeth replied before looking down at the ground. She's definitely the sin of envy. Naruto thought with sweat drops falling at seeing the intense look on Diane's face as she glared down at Elizabeth. Taking a step forward to catch the giant's attention, Naruto took some of the tension off of the princess. You don't have to worry, Lady Diane. Elizabeth has nothing like that with that pervert. You know, you and I aren't in a relationship like that either. Meliodas pointed out to Diane, who looked completely crushed by his words. Part of Naruto couldn't help but feel sorry for the female giant. Anyway, I'm just gonna do what I can to help Elizabeth and Naruto gather the seven deadly sins, because there's something that I want to find out. Well, if that's the case, then I'll come along with you guys. Diane said as she stood up, once again reminding the teenagers and pig of her incredible size, Diane, the serpent sin of envy will lend you her aid. Really? Meliodas asked before nodding his head up at the giant, that's great. Thank you for joining us, Lady Diane. Elizabeth added with a bright smile before turning to her knight, isn't this great, Naruto? Now we managed to find two of the sins. Naruto had a large grin on his face while pumping his fist into the air, yup, only five more to go. But get one thing straight. Yes. Elizabeth questioned as she and Naruto jumped at the annoyed tone in Diane's voice before looking up to see the massive frown on her face. It was clear she was only tolerating them at the moment and didn't seem to trust them, though it also could have been because of Elizabeth being close to Meliodas. The only reason I'm helping you out is because of the captain being here. Diane stated with narrow eyes, causing Elizabeth to let out an awkward laugh while Naruto just stared back at the brunette with a quirked eyebrow. Th thank goodness, we can finally live in peace again. Everyone turned their heads to see that the imps they had been chasing before were hiding behind a few rocks. For years, she's been threatening us by saying she'd go on a rampage if we didn't shelter her. They can be free now, Hawk said as he watched the imps rejoice on Diane's future departure. So, beautiful. I guess that's one way of looking at it. The bemused Naruto shrugged his shoulders with a smile only for his eyes to narrow and his body to tense up as his key senses suddenly went wild as a strange sensation filled the air. What the hell, everybody? Be on your guard. As soon as those words left his lips, the cawing of a crow echoed through the forest, which had the two sins tensing up as well. What was that? Elizabeth asked in confusion. It's strange. Diane said as she looked at the nearby trees for any signs of the bird in question. I didn't think there hardly any animals left in this forest. Meliodas turned his head to look over at Naruto, who was reaching into his pouch to retrieve his grimoire. You sense something? Smells like it's going to rain. Hawk then gasped before pointing towards the sky with his snout. Hey, look up there. Naruto and the other followed Hawk's gaze to see darkened clouds and lightning forming above them. The magicless teen's eyes widened as he recognized the key that was circling in the thundercloud moving a hand over to his open grimoire just as a sword hilt began to emerge from its glowing pages. His actions weren't missed by Diane or Meliodas, the former's eyes widening slightly as she caught sight of Naruto's grimoire. Thunderclouds. Elizabeth murmured as she watched the dark clouds spiral overhead. A large bolt of lightning came striking down towards the group of five, hitting the ground in between them and temporarily blinding everyone in the area. When the light dissipated, Naruto gritted his teeth with a low growl as he saw three electric rings wrapped around his body and sent body-numbing currents throughout his body. The black grimoire was still floating in mid-air next to him and glowing, but due to his electric bindings he was unable to reach for the sword hilt sticking out. Lifting up his head a bit, the others could be seen in similar predicaments along with the imps hiding behind the rocks. The sound of metal-clad feet walking along the ground made everyone turn as much as they could towards the approaching newcomer seeing a pink-haired man wearing armor and brandishing a broadsword covered in electric sparks. And you are? 
Meliodas questioned as he walked the man make his way towards them. It would seem we meet at last, you deadly sins, Gilthunder said as he walked through the mist. This power, Diane could feel the magical energy pouring out of the knight's body. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Meliodas confirmed his fellow sins' thoughts. You're a holy knight, aren't you? Gilthunder, Elizabeth murmured as she instantly recognized the armored man, who said nothing as he stared at the group with a chilled expression. Gilthunder is that you? What are you? Why are you doing this? You know this guy? Meliodas asked. It's been a while, Gil. Naruto called out, ignoring the explanation that Elizabeth was giving to Meliodas about who Gilthunder was. Locking eyes with the Holy Knight. The last time I saw you, you were leading the other Holy Knights into the throne room after destroying the door with your lightning. Naruto, what did you say? The blonde could sense the shocked expression that Elizabeth was sending his way but dismissed it to continue speaking to Gilthunder. But you've certainly been busy since then, haven't you? Blocking the water supply of Vanya village, and then trying to blow the village way with that lance, hey. What would the late Grand Master Zaratras say if he knew how cold and cruel his son had grown up to be? Stop, Naruto. You're wrong. Gilthunder wouldn't. Keep my father's name out of your traitorous mouth. Gilthunder glared at Naruto, who barley batted an eye at the insult. While being a holy knight was an impossible dream for a magicless abnormality such as yourself, you were still given the privilege to serve the kingdom. The king trusted you the amongst all the holy knights to become the personal knight of Princess Elizabeth, and yet, you betrayed the kingdom. Just like the seven deadly sins. A smirk formed on Naruto's face, big talk from the hypocritical bastard that assist the coup against the king. How's Marga? Naruto wasn't able to finish as Gilthunder quickly closed the gap between them and slammed the back of his fist into his face, causing the blonde to take a step to regain his balance, but the smirk remained, touched a nerve, did I? Choose your next words carefully, filthy abomination. Gilthunder stated in a low voice as he and Naruto stare each other down, only for both of them to look up towards Diane as she attempted to break her bindings. These can't hold me, Diane said while struggling to pull her arms apart and break the electricity wrapped around her, only for the magic bindings Gilthunder put around her to grow stronger before locking her wrists together again. Gilthunder spared the giant a glance as Diane continued her attempt at escaping, it's useless. Diane, just save your energy. The serpent sin halted her actions after hearing Meliodas' orders. Captain, Diane muttered as she looked down at the short blonde, grimacing a little from the numbing sensation worsening. Positioning himself behind Meliodas without making a sound, Gilthunder held his sword to the dragon sin's throat. Naruto managed to turn himself around to see that the pink-haired holy knight was solely focused on Meliodas at that moment, before shifting his gaze upon sensing a new presence come into the area. It didn't take him long to locate the source of the new key and caught sight of a lone crow resting on a tree branch with its deep red eyes watching them intently. But from what he was sensing, the creature he was staring at was the furthest thing from a bird. Hmm. Do you know why the holy knights are after the heads of the seven deadly sins? Gilthunder asked the shorter blonde while his blade sparked with electricity. Not really. Meliodas replied with a small shrug. It honestly seemed that he didn't really cared about the situation with how melancholy he was being about it. Half of them are seeking the total eradication of the rebel order that plotted to overthrow the kingdom. Gilthunder explained to Meliodas. The other half want to do glorious battle with the legendary warriors and vanquish them to prove their own strength. And which half are you in? Meliodas questioned. Both of them. Gilthunder replied while tightening the grip on his sword. No, I want more. Meliodas didn't even blink at the answer he had gotten, is that so? Yes, Gilthunder replied. To avenge the death of my father, Zaratras, the Holy Knight's Grand Master. Killing you will show that I am even greater the most powerful Holy Knight ever known. So, you're under the impression that I'm the one who murdered your father, is that it? Meliodas concluded after Gilthunder finished. Are you saying you're not? No idea. You see, the thing is, I don't really remember much from back then. Naruto's eyes widened upon hearing that and stared at Meliodas with a shocked look. Diane seemed confused as she stared down at Meliodas, who was now looking forward as he continued. The last thing I remember is all of us being summoned to the old castle out on the edge of town. Naruto was silent as he listened to Meliodas recall what had happened that day. 
when the seven deadly sins had arrived at the castle to find that Grand Master Zaratros had already been killed and how the Holy Knights swarmed the castle only moments after the seven deadly sins discovered the body. Mentally, he felt relief and happy to hear that those ten years of believing that, old man, Ban and the other deadly sins were innocent turned out to be correct. But at the same time, it also brought up another horrible suspicion that had been gnawing at him ever since he had a conversation with Meroleona several years ago, after hunting and cooking their dinner during one of their training trips. The woman had pointed out that there weren't many who could take down a grand master. To be able to fool the kingdom and frame the seven deadly sins for Zaratros murder, just how powerful were the traitors. I remember telling everyone to split up once the holy knights started attacking, and then a voice apologizing to me. Meliodas finished with the fuzzy memories in his mind. Those words were the last thing I remember before everything goes blank. Then next thing I knew, I was lying face down in a cellar somewhere. That's when I met Hawk. Naruto was right. All this time, he's been saying how the seven deadly sins were innocent. Elizabeth called out from her spot behind Gilthunder, not noticing the mild look of surprise of Diane's face upon hearing the princess's words. You all really weren't the ones who killed the Grandmaster, were you? That makes no difference to me, Gilthunder said barely a second later. Elizabeth looked at Gilthunder in shock, not believing how dismissive the man was being. What are you saying, Gilthunder? A traitorous order that plotted to overthrow the kingdom, Gilthunder stated. That's all you people are. Enough. Elizabeth struggled against the bindings wrapped around her as she continued to speak. You must stop this. Didn't you hear what Sir Meliodas just told you? They aren't the ones who murdered the Grand Master don't you understand? Gil Thunder slowly turned towards Elizabeth to look at her over his shoulder as she was staring at him. Elizabeth. The kingdom had given top priority orders for you to be taken into protective custody, and the death penalty for your knight after kidnapping you. That's a bit extreme, don't you think? Naruto remarked with a deadpan stare, secretly flexing the fingers of his right hand. The floating grimoire next to him seemed to be reacting to this motion as it slowly moved closer to the blonde but I haven't the slightest interest in the order for your return. The magicless knight's eyebrow twitched at Gilthunder continuing to talk as if Naruto hadn't opened his mouth. Whether you are alive or dead, it's all the same to me as you are no more than a grain of sand on the road that is being traveled. Lowering his sword as he turned to face Elizabeth, Gilthunder dispelled the bindings that were around the silver-haired princess. Go away. I only have business with the sins and the traitorous pissant. Elizabeth narrowed her eyes at Gilthunder's words, and to the surprise of many in the area, delivered a sharp slap to the man's cheek. Though the sounds of the impact echoed lightly through the surrounding forest, it didn't seem to do much to the holy knight besides leave a small pick mark on his cheek. Glancing down briefly at his cheek where he could feel a slight stinging sensation, Gilthunder looked up to see that a glaring Elizabeth had placed herself between him and Naruto and the sins. Don't ever call Naruto that again or lay a hand on any of them. Elizabeth, get out of the way, Naruto warned the girl with concern and worry, knowing that Gilthunder would kill the girl if he wanted to, and that thought only solidified after seeing the holy knight raise his sword. Narrowing his eyes at the scene in front of him, Naruto opened his hand as wide as he could just as his grimoire, which had lowered itself closer to his lower back, a sword hilt emerging from its pages once again, though this one appeared different from his usual blade. The blonde quickly seized the weapon in a reverse grip and pulled slightly while the book released the rest of the sword, before bringing its blade to the lighting wrapped around him and cut them. Now free from his bindings, the blonde moved quickly to intercept the holy knight and swung his weapon at Gilthunder's broadsword, knocking it away and forcing the pink-haired man to create a little distance. Don't even think about it, Gil. So, you discreetly moved your grimoire closer to escape with your anti-magic weapons. I suppose even you must have some skill to do that without my noticing. Gilthunder replied while looking from his broadsword, which was no longer letting out electric sparks, towards Naruto, who was standing in front of Elizabeth with his own greatsword positioned in front of him. Captain, that boy, that book and sword, aren't they? Yeah, they're the black grimoire and an anti-magic weapon. Meliodas answered the giant, who was now shocked at that information. A small smirk formed on Naruto's face as his azure eyes locked gazes with Gilthunder's blue ones, it's been a while since we've crossed blades, hasn't it, Gil? A little after his majesty had made me Elizabeth's knight, but a little before the black grimoire chose me to be its wielder, 
We never really got to settle that sparring match, did we? A sparring match. Saying such a thing would imply that we were comrades, rivals, or equals, and yet I've never seen you as any of those. Gilthunder replied in a cool tone. The sounds of Hawk's whining caught Gilthunder and Naruto's attention as the pig crawled across the ground near the Holy Knight. The two looked down to see that Hawk's body was a little cooked from the lightning wrapped around him, and all he could manage to do was crawl while muttering that his end was coming near. Then, without hesitation, Gilthunder kicked Hawk rather hard in the side, sending the pig flying and bouncing away deep into the distant mist. Hawk, no! Elizabeth cried out before rushing past Naruto and Gilthunder to chase after the squealing pig. Her personal knight watched the princess run into the mist, still sensing her key even after she disappeared from sight. He didn't sense anything in that general area even after increasing his range slightly to track Hawk's location, so Elizabeth should be safe and out of the dangerous fight that was about to commence. That was surprisingly nice of you. Naruto commented while moving himself closer to Meliodas and Diane getting Elizabeth out of the way so she wouldn't get involved. I want there to be no more interruption between us, Gilthunder said while making his way back towards Naruto and the Sins. While I don't care about her life, Elizabeth's constant interruptions would prove to me an annoyance and a waste of my time. Are you sure about this? Meliodas questioned. In the old days, you were never able to beat me, remember? But that was then, and this is now. Gilthunder countered as he turned his attention towards the Dragon Sin of Wrath. I am now more powerful than any of the seven deadly sins. I don't know, Meliodas said. Maybe you're right, or maybe you're wrong. Gilthunder straightened his posture as he stared the carefree-looking Meliodas down. Then we should find out. First, I'll release your bonds. I appreciate the offer, but I got it covered. With a swift motion of lifting arms, Meliodas easily shattered the bindings. He wasn't the only one as Diane broke out of her seconds later. Truth is. We could have escaped whenever we felt like it. Naruto just beat us to the punch with his anti-magic. Just know that if I felt like it, I could annihilate you instantly. Gilthunder stated as electricity sparked around his body and sword. Hmm, kind of doubt that. Meliodas replied with a tilt of his head. I will use my sword to kill you, Gilthunder said. Then right back at Yaw, the shorter blonde was cut off as Naruto walked between the Sin and Gilthunder, with his back to Meliodas. Hold on. I want a shot at him first. The two of us have a score to settle, besides, there's something I need to confirm. Ha! Huh. Meliodas turned his head to look at the teen, whose face was partially visible from the angle he was standing and saw the determined look on Naruto's face. Okay, it's fine with me. Diane, don't interfere. Okay, Captain. Diane complied while placing her hands on her hips. The giant was actually a little curious on what Naruto was capable of especially if he was actually able to use the black grimoire of all things. Do you actually think you could face me all on your own, Naruto? Or is this some ploy to not risk me defeating you all at once? Gilthunder questioned as he got into a pre-attack stance, only for Naruto to quickly close the gap and firmly placed his foot on the ground as well as he stared straight at Gilthunder's face, his sword held at his side. Naruto took a silent breath as a tense atmosphere surrounded the two men at their gazes remained focused on one another. A little bit ago, you were talking about how much stronger you've become since you were younger. Don't think that I'm still at the same level one was back when we fought. Or you'll regret it. Gil Thunder was the first to move as he summoned forth lightning from his sword to strike Naruto, who raised his sword in time to intercept the lightning. With a powerful swing, Naruto's sword actually cut through the lightning surprising Gilthunder temporarily before bringing up his sword to intercept Naruto's counterattack. Unlike earlier when Naruto's sword cancelled out the magic flowing through the Holy Knight's broadsword, the lightning pouring out of the sword remained strong due to Gilthunder actually pouring more of his magical energy into his attacks. This momentary pause did not last long as Gilthunder used his lightning-enhanced speed to move behind Naruto only for the blonde to sense the approaching key coming off of the Holy Knight and dodge it before performing a full turn to strike Gilthunder's exposed back. But this was quickly blocked as Gilthunder positioned his sword behind him. Looking over his shoulder, the sparks around Gilthunder grew before an explosion of lightning erupted from his body, the force sending Naruto skidding back several yards with smoke coming off of his sword. Not bad, you're definitely proving that you have some bite to match that barking earlier. Naruto called out as he lowered his sword to flash Gilthunder a big grin, 
despite the scorch marks left on various spots of his clothes and body. And yet, you still the arrogance to speak as if you actually have a chance of defeating me. Gilthunder narrowed his eyes as he raised his sword up to his head. An abomination such as yourself, someone born without any magic, can't hope to stand a chance against a holy knight. It is ridiculous to believe that you were chosen to protect a member of the royal family. Naruto didn't reply immediately as he gripped the sword hilt with both hands. You need to think of more original materials if you're trying to get under my skin, Gil. I've heard crap like that my entire life. Dashing forward, Naruto ducked under Gil Thunder's swing before striking at the pink-haired man's armored torso, surprising the man a little as the blade actually cracked the armor and sent him back a few feet. Gil Thunder's armored boots grinded into the dirt, but the Holy Knight displayed no visible emotion as he came to a stop before leaping into the air with Naruto following after him. Both Meliodas and Diane watched silently as the two knights continued to trade blows at a very fast pace, something that was quite remarkable for Naruto since he was using his physical capabilities to keep up with Gil Thunder and his magic, Thunderbolt, to enhance his movements. While it looked like the two were disappearing and reappearing throughout the field to clash, the two sins could clearly follow the exchange of attacks on their descent back towards the ground. Little Gil's really improved a lot over the years, he might actually be a challenge. Captain, Diane whispered to the smaller Sin, who crossed his arms with a hum. Swinging his sword with a large amount of power, Gilthunder sped up Naruto's fall. The blonde landed on his feet with enough of an impact to create imprints in the ground, keeping his eyes focused on the Holy Knight as he drew closer with his broadsword covered in lightning. Moving his head to dodge the incoming attack, Gilthunder's strike reduced the boulder behind him and the nearby landscape to dust. Gil Thunder sent another streak of lightning towards Naruto, who swung his greatsword to redirect it and send the bolt away, only for his eyes to widen in shock as he picked up Gil Thunder's key suddenly appearing beside him. Turning his head in time to see Gil Thunder swing his sword towards him, Naruto felt the lightning covered blade connect with his stomach before sending him into the air with Gil Thunder jumping after him. Still think you can keep up with me? Gil Thunder mocked as he looked down at Naruto's scowling face before he brought his sword down to the magicless knight's stomach. Naruto barely had time to bring his sword in front of him in time before the pink-haired knight above him made direct contact, but that didn't stop the powerful strike from sending him into the ground. Feeling the small crater that had formed around him give way as he started to lift his body out of it, Naruto let out a chuckle before turning his head to look at Gil Thunder, who had placed himself behind the blonde with his sword at the ready. Did you really think that you could sneak up behind me? That ability to sense and manipulate key and wield that anti-magic sword would normally make things difficult for your opponent. However, I've already deduced methods on how to neutralize such obstacles. Swinging his blade at Naruto's back, Gil Thunder displayed no emotions as the blonde swung around and knocked his broadsword back before pointing his sword at the thunderclouds above their heads. Your weapon might be able to deal with all magic-based threats but it doesn't mean that your body has that same resistance. Lightning King Iron Hammer. Naruto's eyes widened before looking up to see the cumulonimbus clouds overhead growing fiercer, quickly reaching out to his glowing, open grimoire just as a colossal lightning bolt came crashing down on him. Meliodas and Diane temporarily averted their eyes as the bolt of lightning destroyed the surrounding area around where Naruto had been standing, the bright white light it created blinding the area that prevented them from seeing the blonde teenager. A few moments earlier, I can't believe that bastard kicked me like I was some little pink bouncing ball. Hawk shouted in anger as he and Elizabeth were rushing back to where Naruto and the Sins were facing off against Gil Thunder. The silver-haired girl had managed to find the talking pig a good distance away from the battlefield, luckily with his bindings dispersed as he looked like he couldn't have been cooked anymore with how red he was. Elizabeth said nothing as she continued running down the path, her gaze lowered towards the ground. Hey, Elizabeth. Are you okay? Hawk asked as he took notice to the princess's lack of response and saw the distressed expression on her face. Memories of her earlier encounter with Gil Thunder flashed through Elizabeth's mind. I don't understand. He used to be so kind and gentle back when we were younger. Sir Meliodas and the other seven deadly sin weren't responsible for the death of the Grand Master, and yet he still desires to kill them, and the way he was treating Naruto. You got pretty angry when the guy insulted him. I didn't think I would ever see you actually hit someone. It had definitely come as a surprise with how nice and gentle the girl normally was. 
She didn't even try to harm Meliodas whenever the guy did something perverted to her. That's because I don't, but Naruto doesn't deserve any of the mistreatments or insults people have thrown at him. He might not have magical power, but that doesn't stop him from working harder than anyone else or being kind to others. He is my closest friend, and someone irreplaceable. So even if he just brushes off what people call him, I refuse to let anyone talk badly about him. Elizabeth stated with a determined look on her face. This was quickly replaced with concern as a gigantic bolt of lighting was seen striking down not too far away from the two, followed by the ground underneath them shake, causing the two to come to a halt. Was that Gil Thunder? That was freaking huge. Hawk exclaimed as sweat poured down his body, the body liquid creating tingling sensations as they passed over his burn marks. Bringing a hand to her chest as worry filled her heart, Elizabeth once again took off running, almost leaving the talking pig behind as it chased after the princess. Naruto, Sir Meliodas. N e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l n e l Wow, that was a big one. I've gotta admit. You've really gotten a lot stronger since we last saw each other. Meliodas said as he and Diane took in the destruction the lightning bolt had caused in the area, where dozens of the surrounding trees had been destroyed and the ground ripped open. The spot where Naruto had been standing was covering in smoke and dust, preventing them from seeing what had happened to the blonde inside. Yet you still believe that you're superior to me. Rest assured, you will share Naruto's fate. Gil Thunder replied as he looked over from the smoke towards the dragon sin who had his hands in his pockets and looked as carefree as ever. Don't count, me out, just yet. Gil Thunder halted his attempt to get closer to the sins upon hearing a voice speak up and turned his gaze back to the cloud of smoke. So, you somehow managed to survive. Impressive. Everyone in the area watched as the smoke created from Gil Thunder's lightning attack parted to reveal Naruto's form. The right portion of the blonde's shirt and jacket had been destroyed while his body had several burn marks. They instantly took notice to the second black sword that was resting in the blonde's right hand as he held it above his head with the blade pointing towards the sky, but it was his right arm that had the attention of Gil Thunder and the two deadly sins. The lightning strike had also destroyed the bandages to reveal his right arm's true appearance. With his hand clenched tightly on his second sword and covered in electricity, it certainly didn't look like it belonged to a human. All the way from his forearm to the back of his hand and outside of the fingers, it was almost completely covered in red scale-like skin with strange blue vein-like lines visible, and sharp black fingernails. His arm, it doesn't look like it was caused by the lightning. Does that mean it's always looked like that? Diane muttered to the smaller Sin, who said nothing as he studied Naruto's arm with a suspicious look. The panting Naruto's arms fell to his sides causing the tip of his swords to stab into ground while trails of black smoke came off his body, the upper half of his face covered by his hair and his body trembling. That was a close one, if I hadn't brought out, my second sword, I'd be a goner. It seems your second sword had more of a cutting ability than your first one, Gil Thunder stated as he surveyed the area below Naruto's feet, where, except for the area immediately surrounding the blonde, the rest of the ground looked as damaged as the rest of the field. You sliced a small opening in the lightning bolt to give your body enough of an opening to avoid most of the damage. It would seem I greatly underestimated you. I get it. He managed to protect himself from most of Little Gil's attack by using the second blade to intercept it, though there seems to be something more to this one, Meliodas' words were proven true. Unlike the large, heavy broadsword that Naruto had in his left hand, this new blade was almost half the size and much more detailed. There were black markings that stretched along the blade until it reached its heavily ornate hilt with a four-sided guard, with a grip with a spiral design and a sphere for the pommel. The only real similarities between this sword and Naruto's other weapon was the fact that they were both black and mostly covered in dirt and scuff marks. But even so, you didn't escape without injury. Gil Thunder made his way closer to Naruto, whose body continued to tremble and struggle to move. Even without it being enhanced by my magic, the volts in a single lighting strike is too much for the body to handle before it starts to fail. I doubt you could do much in that weakened state before I finish you off. Coming to a stop in front of Naruto, 
Gilthunder kept a tight grip on his sword as he stared down at Naruto's crouched, shaking form. You were lucky enough to last as long as you did against me, perhaps even more so in being able to find two of the seven deadly sins. Though I honestly doubt you would have succeeded with the remaining five. So, you know, what happened to them? Naruto asked as he hidden gaze focused on the ground below him, with it looking like he was about to collapse at any second. I'm not surprised, tell me, Gil, where are, the rest of them? Gil Thunder was silent for a few seconds as he considered answering Naruto's question, before briefly closing his eyes before reopening them. I suppose I can answer your final question before I finish you off, when it comes to remaining five sins, there are only two that have been dealt with. Three of them still remain at large and are currently unaccounted for, the fox sin of greed, the one that you were said to have been associated with, is being kept under tight security at based prison. The other sin, the grisly sin of sloth, has already been slain and is interred in the necropolis. As he divulged the information to Naruto's shaking form, Gil Thunder raised his sword above his head, preparing to take Naruto's life. It was foolish of you to think that you could get away with kidnapping Princess Elizabeth and find all of the seven deadly sins, becoming an enemy to the kingdom. Idio, Ak, what was that? Gil Thunder narrowed his eyes as he heard Naruto mutter something as his shaking increased. Though he didn't exhibit any emotions, the pink-haired man was shocked to see that it turned out that Naruto was actually starting to chuckle before it turned into full-blown laughter. All of the fatigue, shakiness, and weakened appearance in general was instantly replaced with so much energy and delight. I was saying that the idiot would only get locked up was if he let himself, which means old man Ban was probably getting bored. Naruto continued to laugh as he left his larger sword stabbed into the ground while his smaller sword rest lazily slung over his shoulder. Thanks for the info, Gil. So, our next destinations are based prison and the necropolis. Ha! Huh. So he actually took that lightning strike on purpose in order to learn what little Gil knew about the other sins, Meliodas said before an amused grin formed on his face, not bad. Seems like something you probably would have done if you were fighting him, Captain. Diane pointed out with her hands on her hips, but talking about Ban like that and calling him an old man, does he know him? He's that kid that Ban used to tell us about the one he took under his wing. Wait. You mean he was actually telling the truth about that? Ah, now I see. But even so, you're still? Gilthunder's eyes widened as the markings on Naruto's new sword began to glow brightly before the blonde swung the blade in front of him and released an arc of lightning that quickly flew at the holy knight. The pink-haired man managed to bring his sword up in time to block the attack, however, the power behind it caused him to be sent flying back into a nearby boulder that was nearly the size of Diane, but not before upper half of his sword broke off and the attack slammed into his armored torso. The boulder he slammed into couldn't stand the impact and crumbled around Gil Thunder, who had some blood falling down his face as he returned to his feet. How is that possible? It shouldn't be possible for you to use magic. Under normal circumstances, you'd be right. But you can thank my demon dweller sword for that. Naruto stated as he held up his sword, which was no longer glowing, it has the ability to absorb magic attack, spells and then release that magic in a slash attack that can be used for both close range and long range combat. Normally, it would take a few more times to produce something that's strong, but hey, you were the one who let loose that lightning king iron hammer. So, it is similar to Meliodas full counter. Just like him you can take a person's magic and throw it back at them. I must admit, I'm a little surprised that is more to your anti-magic weapons than cancelling out magic. Gil Thunder replied while straightening himself, glancing briefly at his broken sword before looking back towards Naruto. But it won't be enough. You still allowed yourself to get injured just to get some information from me. My attack from earlier still severely injured you. Then it's a good thing I snagged this off of you. Naruto replied with a large smirk as he raised his left hand and jerked his sleeve causing a green sphere-like object to fall between his index and middle finger. I was actually kind of surprised you had an incantation orb on you, but it makes sense if you were going to deal with people as strong as Meliodas or Lady Diane or me. Naruto played with the small orb with his fingers while smirking at Gil Thunder, who was now glaring at the blonde, probably silently trying to figure out when Naruto had taken the magical object. You weren't the only one that learned a thing or two from a deadly sin. Unlike the sword lessons you had with a wrathful dragon, I learned many neat tricks from a greedy fox. Like how to pickpocket someone while they are distracted by misdirection. You stole it back when we first clashed blades earlier. 
Gilthunder deduced as he thought back to when the blonde moved in between him and Elizabeth to create some distance, how he only used a one-arm swing to do it while the other must have stealthily snatched the incantation orb away. Stealing a magical item in the middle of a battle without the enemy noticing, he really did learn a thing or two from Ban. Meliodas let out a small chuckle as he watched Naruto goad Gilthunder with a smirk on his face, the silhouette of a white-haired man standing behind him in a similar position. He's even got the same look on his face after stealing something. There's not much you can do now that I've got this, and your blade damaged like that. Even if you did somehow defeat me, Meliodas and Lady Diane are still in peak condition compared to your current condition. So why don't we continue this another time? Naruto offered as his grimoire floated closer to his larger sword before swallowing it up in its pages, though the blonde continued to hold onto his smaller blade. I think not. Gilthunder moved quickly to cut Naruto down with the remains of his sword, only for Naruto to maneuver himself around the attack and place himself behind Gilthunder. If it weren't for the obvious damage visible on the magicless blonde, you wouldn't have thought he was injured. Not willing to end it, Gilthunder spun around and tried another attempt, only for Naruto to duck under the swing before disappearing once again. Gilthunder followed after Naruto with his sword covered with lightning sparks. This is goodbye. Gilthunder said as he launched a lightning strike at Naruto's back, just as the blonde turned to face him. The pink-haired man's attack never made contact with Naruto as Meliodas moved in front of the taller blonde with his broken sword in hand, before knocking the lightning blast away with a swing of his sword and sent it flying back at Gilthunder, who leapt out of the way. Grinning as he rested the dragon hilt against his shoulder, Meliodas turned towards Gilthunder as he landed. You mentioned my full counter, so how was the real thing? Meliodas, are you really interfering? I have no qualms about striking you down as well. Sounds interesting, but this doesn't seem like the right time for the two of us to clash. Meliodas answered before waving his hand at the Holy Knight. It was nice catching up, little Gil. I'll catch you later. Gil Thunder blinked in confusion at Meliodas' casual attitude, before finding himself being picked up by Diane who had been standing and waiting for Meliodas to redirect him towards her and raised the pink-haired man above her head. The giant turned her head to glance up at Gilthunder, you heard the captain, some other time. Unhand me. Gilthunder ordered while using his thunderbolt to cover himself in a veil of lighting to get her to release him, but Diane barely winced at the action even as it destroyed her brace. Here's a tip for you. Okay. Diane said as she looked at Gilthunder in annoyance. Girls get really annoyed when boys try to shock them. After saying her piece, Diane brought her arm back before throwing Gilthunder sailing through the air, disappearing into the distance while Meliodas was waving him off and Naruto blinking in surprise at the two sins intervening. Um, thanks. I don't know if that counts as stealing my fight, but with how injured I am, I won't complain. Naruto finally said as he looked from Meliodas towards Diane. That was a nice throw, Lady Diane. Whoa, but I think you're gonna need a new vambrace. Meliodas pointed out, causing Diane to look down and take notice to her ruined brace, letting out a low whine at seeing how damaged it was. Holy crap. Just look at this place. Moving his sword into his left hand, Naruto looked to the side with Meliodas and Diane upon hearing Hawk's shout followed by his hooves hitting the ground rapidly as he and Elizabeth returned from wherever they had been. As the two entered the vicinity, the princess's eyes widened in shock and horror at Naruto's injured appearance. Naruto. Elizabeth called out as she rushed over to the blonde and started to fret over his injuries. All these wounds, and your bandages, you were the one caught in that lightning blast earlier, weren't you? It's nothing to worry about, Elizabeth. I avoided any major damage that Gil threw at me. As he spoke, Naruto tried to position his right arm to that it would be out of sight, only for Elizabeth to grab it gently and brought it close to her face. Hey, what are you? Please don't. Speaking of that swine, where does he anyway? Hawk asked as he looked around with an angry look. Wait, aren't you a swine? Meliodas asked with a tilt of his head. Who smells delicious? Diane added before wiping away the small bit of drool that formed at the corner of her mouth. Naruto lifted his nose in the air before taking a sniff, all that fighting did make me hungry. All of their words made Hawk whimper in fright as his body started to shake. He was too young to be cooked up and served up to a giant and human. Looking at all of the injuries that Naruto has sustained during his battle with Gilthunder, Elizabeth lowered their hands with a small frown. 
We need to get you back to the boar's hat so we can treat your injuries. You were being reckless, weren't you? I may have let myself get a little injured to trick Gil into giving me information. Naruto answered while avoiding Elizabeth's gaze. A little? But you're covered in burns and blood, it could have been worse. That doesn't make me feel better at all. Hey, will you two stop it with the touchy-feely stuff already? Diane interrupted, causing the two teenagers to part and look up to see that the giant had an annoyed, flushed look on her face. With how injured Naruto was, he wisely took a step back with the princess since he didn't want to annoy Diane into going into a punching frenzy again. The annoyed look that Diane had was replaced with a sad one, rubbing that kind of tender moment in my face. If only the captain was injured, then I could take care of him and help him recover as his right-hand girl. Both Naruto and Elizabeth couldn't help but sweat drop at the giant brunette's words. Isn't it a good thing that Meliodas wasn't injured? Hey, aren't you guys forgetting something here? Hawk cut in with a twitch mark forming on the side of his head. I just got my ass kicked really hard by that guy. Meliodas went over to the talking pig and started patting him down as if looking for injuries, though he wasn't even close to the pig's butt. Over here? Those are my spare ribs. Hawk corrected. The dragon sin moved over to Hawk's other side and patted Hawk around his head, which was even further from where Hawk said he was kicked. Do you mean here? No, that's my pork shoulder. Hawk replied before realizing that what Meliodas was doing. You're doing this on purpose. Quit fooling around. But to the pig's annoyance, Meliodas just grinned back at Hawk with his hands on his hips. Don't worry, Hawk. Elizabeth said gently as she finally stepped away from Naruto to face the pig. I'll put a cold compress on it later. Upon hearing that, Hawk ran over to Elizabeth to hug the girl with his short, stubby piggy legs. It was funny to watch. Oh, you're the only one who worries about me, Elizabeth. Hey, Sir Hawk. Come over here. Naruto called out while waving the pig over to him, getting a confused look from the talking swine. Holding up the incantation orb he had stolen from Gil Thunder, Naruto flashed Hawk a small grin. If we use this thing, the two of us will be as good as new. Really? The pig questioned as he pushed off Elizabeth and moved closer to the injured blonde. It's to be expected. The super recovery spell is capable of healing any injuries, but it doesn't really have a good range so we need to be pretty close to use it properly. Naruto explained before turning towards Diane. Do you want to join in? Gil did shock your hand before you sent him flying. Don't worry about me, I barely felt him do it. The giant declined, a little touched that the younger blonde threw her the offer. Lifting himself up so that his front hooves were resting on Naruto's legs, an impatient hawk his snout closer to Naruto's head. Come on, come on. Use it already, I can feel the burning sensation still cooking me. Meliodas was right, you are an annoying piggy. Naruto sighed as he pushed Hawk off of him before raising the hand holding the incantation orb above his head. All right, just got to smash this, then. Suddenly, Naruto's body seized up before reaching for his chest with a pained expression. Elizabeth watched in horror as Naruto fell forward and hit the ground, the small orb falling out of his hand and rolled to few inches. Naruto. Rushing to his side with Meliodas behind her, while Diane simply leaned forward, the two of them along with Hawk flipped the magicless teenager over to see that his body was spasming with a hand grabbing at his chest. The dragon sin moved Naruto's hand out of the way before placing an ear to his chest. What's wrong with him, Sir Meliodas? His heartbeat is very rapid and irregular, and his muscles are spasming too. He was electrocuted by Little Gil's attack and was probably disregarding the pain until it was too much for him. Meliodas explained, recognizing the symptoms from previous times he had encountered varieties of lightning magic. Scanning the ground quickly, the shorter blonde quickly found the green orb that Naruto was holding earlier before picking it up. Luckily, we have this to help us out. Super recovery spell. Tossing the orb into the ground, shattering it in the process, a bubble of energy surrounded them. Elizabeth watched as the spell created by the incantation orb instantly started working as all of the burn marks on both Hawk and Naruto's bodies quickly faded. Even the scuff marks vanished off the ladder, completely healing the two. But the princess's focus was more on Naruto at that moment as the pain-filled look he had before was replaced with a peaceful one, not paying attention to the bubble fading away as she reached out to touch his face. He's going to be okay now, right? Yup, no need to worry, Elizabeth. Meliodas flashed the girl a reassuring smile, 
before lifting Naruto over his shoulder. He should be good as new when he wakes up. Later that day, apparently Ban, the sin of greed, was thrown into prison, and King, the sin of sloth, is dead and buried. Meliodas said while riding on Diane's shoulder as she walked alongside Hawk's mom, the short blonde holding up the wanted posters of the two sins he was talking about. What do you think? Is the information we got true? Well, I don't really have any thoughts about it. After all, I'm not interested in any man but you, Captain. Diane answered, staring at the wanted poster of herself being held between her index finger and thumb, before flashing Meliodas a smile. But still, don't ignore the more important detail. Look at what a Y babe I've become after all this time. A lot can happen after ten year. The dragon sin stared at the wanted poster's image Diane was holding in front of her face for a few seconds, which, like the rest of the drawings of the seven deadly sins, only had a few similarities and barely looked like the actual person. But those drawings are made up. The artist's rendition of the seven deadly sins. All right, I've decided on where we should go first. We'll head to based prison to grab Ban. All right. Sounds good to me, Captain. Diane cheered before pausing as a thought occurred to her, oh, right. You said earlier that he was the kid that Ban used to tell us about, right? To be honest, I didn't really believe him when he told us back then, since he never introduced the kid to us. Part of me thought he was just saying that because he was jealous of you training the Grand Master's son, while another part thought he was just trying to drive King crazy. The serpent sin confessed as she looked at the tavern resting on Hawk's mom's head. Hard to believe he is a knight serving a princess and a powerful one that can wield the black grimoire of all things. I had heard from King that it was impossible for anyone to use the book or the anti-magic weapons. I don't doubt King's words, but I don't think it applies to someone who doesn't possess any magical power at all. Meliodas answered with crossed arms as he looked back at the boar's hat. Hawk was inside the bar, cleaning up the place with a special mop that he could tie to his body while Elizabeth was inside her room where Naruto was currently resting for the past two hours, not leaving his side at all. Even if all his wounds had been healed, the blonde had endured some serious electrocution and exerted his injured body before succumbing to the pain. Although, the magicless blonde should be up any time now. Diane blinked in shock as she too looked back at the building, so I wasn't imagining things earlier. How can someone not have any magic? Unfortunately, there is only one person that comes to mind that would probably having an answer. Leaping off of Diane's shoulder, much to the giant's dismay, Meliodas rubbed the back of his head while looking up at the sky, it's too bad we don't know where Merlin is, but what can you do? Captain, Meliodas turned to face Diane after hearing her call out to him, a frown present on the serpent sin's face, do you really think we can trust those two? I'll go along with it if that's what you want but are we completely sure that that girl and her knight won't turn against us? After a few seconds of silence, Meliodas flashed Diane a smile. Yeah, there isn't a doubt in my mind that they're on our side. But if you want to reserve judgment until after you've gotten to know them, that's fine with me. Thank you, Captain. In Elizabeth's room, opening his eyes, Naruto was greeted with a semi-familiar ceiling that he had gotten used to seeing in the past week. Shuffling around a bit after realizing he was in a bed with the covers draped over him, the blonde instantly took notice to the lack of pain he was feeling, which meant that someone had used the incantation orb to heal him. It was a little embarrassing to think that his body had succumbed to the pain from Gilthunder's lightning when he had endured other attacks that had been just at bad and still remained conscious. Naruto, I'm so glad you're awake. Turning his head to see that the silver-haired girl was sitting in a chair next to the bed he was resting in. Elizabeth, I'm glad to see you're okay. Naruto asked as he lifted himself up into a sitting position, smiling softly at the girl when she attempted to stop him. Don't worry, I'm fine now. How long was I out? A couple of hours. Sir Meliodas brought you back here after you were healed. I haven't left your side because I was worried something else might be wrong. Elizabeth looked down at her hands resting on her lap. You really had me worried, Naruto. The reassuring smile on Naruto's face dimmed a little after hearing Elizabeth's words, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you like that, to be left in such a state and become a burden to you both physically and emotionally, I must be a terrible excuse for a night right now. That's not true. Elizabeth denied as she took Naruto's deformed hand into her own, her soft fingers curling around his scaly appendage. It didn't seem to bother the girl as she looked straight into Naruto's eyes. You have been the best personal night I could ever have. You've always been there for me when I've needed you. 
except for the time that we were separated. Naruto's attempt at a rebuttal was answered by Elizabeth shaking her head. That was only to keep me safe, and it was my fault for straying off too far for you to find me sooner. But you did track me down and save me from the knight that tried to kill me and Sir Meliodas. Pretty sure the midget could have taken care of him easily. Naruto replied before taking a deep breath and flashed the princess a large smile. It's fine, Elizabeth. This experience just means that there's still room for me to grow. Just know that I promise to stay by your side and keep you safe no matter what happens. Yes. We'll find the rest of the seven deadly sins and save the kingdom of Leones from the Holy Knight's corruption. It always brought a smile to the girl's face to know that she had Naruto by her side. Though it faltered at the memory of their interaction with Gilthunder and the pink-haired man's actions, I still have a hard time believing that Gilthunder was the one responsible for my father's capture, or how he acted earlier. Even if we manage to succeed, things will never go back to the way they were, will they? Gently taking his hand out of Elizabeth's grasp, Naruto moved to get out of the bed and perform some light stretches. We've still got a long journey ahead of us if what Gil told us was accurate. Do we know what our next destination is? Sir Meliodas and Lady Diane are currently talking about it outside. Elizabeth replied as she watched Naruto make his way over to the closet before opening it, do you want to join them? That sounds like a good idea. Though it's not as if our options give us much of a choice. Naruto reached a hand up towards one of the higher shelves where a box of medical supplies were located, only for it to pause as Elizabeth spoke up once again. You don't have to hide it, the magicless knight turned his head back to look at Elizabeth, who brought a clenched fist up to her chest, you were about to wrap up your arm again, right? There's no need for you to wrap it up again. I can't exactly go out in public with something like this out in the open. People might freak out, or worse, call for the holy knights because they see me as a threat. Naruto answered while retrieving the box and closed the closet behind him. Many of the people back in the kingdom of Leones know about my arm. So once words gets out about a blonde teenager with a mangled, demonic arm, they'll know I am and our location. But you don't have to wear them now, do you? Elizabeth asked as she moved closer to Naruto. Even if her knight never stated it, she knew that he was self-conscious about his arm's demonic appearance. It had taken him almost two years for him to feel secure enough for her to actually see what it looked like without the bandages. Despite the initial surprise upon seeing Naruto's arm, Elizabeth didn't feel afraid or disgusted whenever she looked at it and had no problems with letting him know that. You don't have to hide anything from us. So please, keep the bandages off until we reach our destination. Naruto stared back at Elizabeth for a few seconds before letting out a sigh. I can't say no when you look at me like that. All right, I'll hold off for now. Thank you, Naruto. Elizabeth beamed before heading towards the door. I'll let you get dressed and then we'll go outside to meet with Sir Meliodas. The personal knight watched as the princess he guarded exited the room and closed the door behind her, waiting a few seconds before turning his gaze towards the scenic view he got through the window of the bedroom, which was slowly changing as Hawk's mom moved along. Memories of his battle with Gilthunder flashed through his mind, causing his right hand to clench tightly into a fist. It's obvious there was more to your situation, Gil, whatever it is, someone is forcing your hand. Grabbing a nearby shirt that has draped over the nearby chair, Naruto slid it on as another thought came to mind, but this time it brought large grin to his face. So, Ban is at based prison, I guess that means we're planning a jailbreak. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.